Uh, never gets old when you get laughed at for mentioning maps. Anyone, any of you know maps? I went to a lecture today over medicinal plants, and how could I not bring up maps, multidisciplinary of psychedelic studies? And the professor laughed at me. I'm like, what? No, we're really doing this for real. We're, I'm, very, I'm interested in this. You just want to get the stone, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, no, I'm just kidding. No, she really laughed at me, though. It kind of, kind of offended me. Anyway, I have to get that, my, get that off my chest. Welcome back to the Sci-Fi and Friends podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Some quick um, overview of the few different things that, they're not sponsors, but they're like things that I endorse. And, you know, I bought something off their website, so they gave me like a uh, referral link, you know. One of those is on it. The referral link is in the bio description underneath the guest description in all the episodes. Click that link. Save 10% on your orders. Over $35, you can get supplements, workout equipment, all that good stuff. 23andMe, you want to see your genetic genome put out? A genetic genome. Think about that. My, my biology people would slap me for hearing that. You want to see what sort of alleles that you have? You want to see if you're the carrier of Huntington... <coughs> The carrier of Huntington's disease. <laughs> you want to see that you're the carrier of Huntington's disease? Well, 23andMe can help you out with that. They can tell you um, where your ancestors have come from, track mitochondrial DNA from your maternal side, all sorts of stuff. Way, way above my head. That's why I'm in school for it. But there is a description, or there is a link in the description to save 20% on. 23 and me genetic testing and the final little thing is the sticker mule i just ordered 70 four by four stickers of the sci-fi and friends podcast logo so get ready to be have to have access to those and i was going to give it to all the guests that come on and people can put it on their guitar cases and their cars and their wives and anywhere they want to put it <laughs> uh but there is a link in the bio to save i think it's I think it's a $10 off. $10 off an order. Uh, orders start at 50 stickers, and they go up to like 5,000. So if you're looking for bulk stickers, go to stickermule.com. That is it. Episode number 22. Today, my guest, one of my favorite human beings on planet Earth. We have known each other for quite some time. Our interests are very similar. Our paths have been different, but always intertwined. He is a videographer, documentary filmmaker, world traveler, a KC native mogul. Uh, I like to think of him as if Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark had a child. <laughs> well, that's who would be sitting across me right now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Colin Crossland. <laughs> thing that anyone's ever said to me <laughs> you just want to wrap this podcast up you know like just yeah we could we can end on that i'm like i got what i needed <laughs> i'm going home i got that on the record someone saying that <laughs> yeah. anytime, anytime that they go for a job interview uh you didn't bring a resume i just need you to listen to the first two just, minutes of this podcast all you gotta do i mean yeah also i'm gonna give you some great discount cuts yeah. <laughs> so that's well, my resume. those really work those i'm really already work. saving you money <laughs> Dude, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, thanks for having me, man. How, how's Kansas City? Kansas City's good. It's yeah. busy. We're like, we're super busy these days. This is always my busy season in uh, videography. Right. What is it? Uh, September, like fall? Is that the pretty much season? when summer's over? Uh, I stop having fun. I'm gonna have my last bit of fun mm -hmm. uh, this weekend. I'm going to the Chiefs game uh, oh, with my parents. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, they just oh. took you to Vegas. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, they. Did. We can talk about that in a little bit. We can take that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we can, uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this is the busy season. Yeah, so this is always my busy season because, like, as soon as September starts, I have a short amount of time before December, like, 10th or 11th or around the 13th is where in our company Christmas party is. And so I am constantly trying to edit, like, five or six awesome videos for that. And they have about like a thousand people that come out to like this Jeez. hotel and have a huge party. And not a lot of big companies do that right. anymore for their employees. It was just something my 
dad and my uncles have always done for their employees, and it, it's a great time. Like, everyone wants to come. It's yeah. so much fun. I was like, open bar and free food. No, it's not open bar. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, we would go Almost. bankrupt if that was the case. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, I believe that. But, uh, yeah, it's it's just a big presentation. We award. We only have two awards, so it's real quick. Like, uh, ceremony, we, ha- we give, like, our man of the year and our two biggest companies. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we have, like, funny intro videos and funny, like... Uh, commercials and, and usually like a badass finale right and so uh yeah Wait, I, I do all those videos i was gonna say you you, <laughs> you kind of developed that whole thing you know uh <laughs> back in the day as far as i understand the christmas party was you know pretty generic like come let's have fun let's give some awards away but when they introduced you to the videographer actually they kind of made the, the department for you and then you just took over this whole christmas party you know you've you're the one that kind of came up with themes and uh, different videos mm-hmm. and, and ideas. You know, um, what was the one? You can't handle the truth. Did we make the? Oh, yeah. did well, we? Make... What was that from? Uh, you can't handle. The... Oh, it was the commercial from. Uh, we did a spoof commercial of uh, a few good men, and we had like my dad like being Tom Cruise's role, and one of our estimators like talking about a bid. Like, did you bid that job? Yeah, yeah. Did you bid that job? He's like, you're damn right, I did. <laughs> And he's like, oh, good, because we got it. Yeah. Like, oh, no way. That's Sweet. awesome. All right. And they high five. Oh, it was and beautiful. Commercial. And especially <laughs> if you know Benny, you know, he's not like that at yeah, all. No, he's not. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we got it. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's that's probably the meanest I've ever seen your dad. And I'm like, really? <laughs> hey, that's true. I think well, we talk about two different viewpoints. I'm his son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the Christmas party, the Co- Crossland Christmas party is now like the Oscars in a way. You know, everyone yeah. like, Gets up and goes, and there's all these uh, events, and like you said, awards. Tuxedos. I wore a tuxedo on you. That was fun. (laughs) Do you actually get to enjoy it, or are you, like, show running? Uh, They've asked me to, like, run the videos before, but usually I'm, like, there's, like, a thousand people watching your stuff, and you made it all in the time span of, like, three months. You've been shooting for it all year kind of thing, and you just put together what you have, Right. and it's got to be good. My first time I ever did it, it was terrible. (laughs) Well, that's all right. <laughs> I mean, it, it just took too like there were too many graphics. It took too long. Yeah, the whole ser- the whole thing took about two hours. So people just sitting there listening to stuff for two hours. They can't like get up and go to the bar and kind right. of stuff because they don't want to be rude if you're in front. Yeah. And so I felt so bad after that. So I, like I literally decided I'm like never again. Right. Like I'll just make sure it hits every time. And so I've had like probably three really straight good years, and then that first bad year. <laughs> That's what, but look how much you learned. Yeah. Last year was painfully. My, last year was probably my best year. We nice. did uh, CSBN. Crossland Sports Network. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember interviewing people like, what's the secret to success? Oh, yeah, we went out to the field. And, yeah. Uh, that was your first concrete pour. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Is that you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about the managers thing. The managers Ooh. retreat when they were playing. Oh, superintendent. They were retreat. doing the volleyball. Remember how pissed off? And everyone's drunk. Yeah. And, and they then tried we tried to shoot down my drone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Uh, your uncle. Yeah, he does that. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. But no, he's like, they he's were. Like, You're going to fly it. I'm like, I don't want to fly it. <laughs> I know what you're going to do. <laughs> do you remember he when he did, too? He's like, <laughs> oh, dude, he, he oh popped God, off at man. least five shots. I put that thing down fast. Oh, my <laughs> God. You just saw him Laid raise it behind ups. the car, and, like, both of us, like, have our heads out. Like, or had our heads out, and we are like, no way. I was, <laughs> I was so offended. <laughs> do you know how much that cost? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's 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 an interesting cat. Speaking of drones, mm. I want to know your thoughts on mm. the uh, karma. Speaking of videography and everything. Uh, yeah, Karma. I need to know about the GoPro. I got to cheat. You haven't checked out the Karma yet? Maybe I have. Colton. Karma. To you. Hinduism and Buddhism. The Ma- son of GoPro people. drone right there in the news. <laughs> so what's uh, this one right here? The GoPro drone just came out yesterday. Okay. And it carries a GoPro Hero 5. I, I didn't even know they had a 5. Yeah, the 5 came out yesterday, too. Man, you were so, okay. like, it's only been a day. I can't really... <laughs> Okay, so this guy's flying a GoPro drone. Exactly. It's see, it's an all built-in system. The uh-huh. remote and the screen are like attached, like a fold-up thing, uh-huh. kind of like uh, like a like a girl's mascara thing. Okay, right. Here, you know, right. pops up like that, and then you fly it, and <gasps> it's got twenty minutes of flight time. That shit is fast, dude. It is, and it's stabilized too. The GoPro on the front is stabilized. So is this GoPro Five? What's the uh, resolution like? Is this a wide angle? Like it's always four K up to four K, thirty frames per second. So it's basically as high as the last one, but this one's voice controlled. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, and it takes raw images now. What? But not in video. 
just okay. photos. Wow. Okay, that's that's serious. That's a step you know, up. Only, yeah. only a few cameras like DSLRs will do that. I don't know a camera that small that takes <coughs> raw images. No, not I. Not me. Need, me neither. <laughs> okay, let me see this if I can find. This guy might not be the best person to like. He I'm has sure that four was million Penn. followers. <laughs> <laughs> that was not Sean. Penn. It looked a lot like Sean Penn. It did. Oh, sweet, the karma. Interesting. So here's the GoPro Five. Man, it looks. Colton, sexy. Will, in, Colton will include this in your show notes. I will. Yeah. Study it carefully. The links <laughs> in the show notes. So I just want. To, okay, so it's um, two touch display, touch screen. Right there, two inch touch display, and it's already waterproof. Oh, the whole camera. Th- you don't have to have water- a case. No case. Wow. All waterproof out of the box. I'm like, yeah, that's amazing. Video stabilization. Only with uh, 1080p. Okay. No 4K. Yeah, because they crop it kind of broke my heart. <laughs> yeah, you know. It reminds me of the, the Hero 4 when they were like, it shoots yeah. 4K at 10 frames a second. And this kind of goes back to the whole uh, cross on marketing thing because this is what I, GoPro is what I started out I was going to, you were the GoPro <laughs> god. For like two years. I you was still have a stash of GoPros. Of GoPros. I do. You have like, like, <laughs> like a, they're like a nest. I like, have, I have a bunch of broken ones. Big two. Yeah. Hero so like, I want one Big day, I, one day I want to make like a, t- like a time case where like, this is my first camera. And Dude, then like, you and, should. And then break them as Why I Why don't you <laughs> do that? You need that on your wall in your apartment. I think that requires time. Yes, it does. <laughs> Just yeah, have a case with one GoPro and then like a, a, a like a screenshot of footage that it took. Yeah, you know? exactly. And then the like, next one is you know like the next when one. We tr- I remember and then put the red. It's so funny to see like GoPro make a drone because in 2013 I was duct taping drones <laughs> <laughs> to Phantom Ones and they were not supposed to be used for that. You were like, duct taping GoPros. All. Yeah, I was duct taping GoPros, like GoPro Hero 2s, so those big, the big heavy fat brick ones. ones yeah. yeah, and you had With, the double battery case, yeah. too, so they were <laughs> even bigger. So I was like, I'm going for as much as possible, and I couldn't even get it off the ground. Really? Yeah. Started out with a Parrot, you know, those little toy ones yep, so you yep, get yep. kids, and they fly them with your iPad. Couldn't handle the weight. <laughs> Par- or, uh, Phantom 1, couldn't handle the weight. Are you serious? Oh, so the serious. Phantom 1, did it come with a camera? No, it wasn't marketed for that yet. Which it was just I'm a like, flyer. It was, it was just a helicopter. Whoa. And I don't even know. I think wow. it's sold terribly. And they're right. like, oh, we should attach we like to a have GoPro some, yeah, on the no case on the bottom. See. Yeah. yeah, and that was crazy cool. Whoa. And from there on, I was able to, like, I remember the first time I got it up, I was like, yes! <laughs> yes! Please, someone it quote flies! him on that. It it flies! Well, I got it up. I want a t-shirt. The first time I got it up, I was like, <laughs> It's yes! just a drone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm going to make some t-shirts for this podcast, just like all the little clippets like that. And then hashtag on the back episode like twenty two. <laughs> Fuck yeah, get some revenue. That's you were awesome. the first person that I, you know, knew that had a drone, and then you were the first person that I knew that had a f- inspired, you know, like one of the mm, top yeah, lines. Yeah. Which, and I quote, when I read about it, the Lamborghini of drones. <laughs> that's what that's what this article said. The Wired yeah. article said Lamborghini and drones. I still have it's in the car. Yeah, it's amazing, <laughs> it's, amazing device. It's lasted forever. I mean, mm-hmm. um, my first or my second. It was probably my second or third. The Phantom 2, mm-hmm. I crashed that in Texas, and it was done. Like, it was done after right. that. Like, it's just, it, it, a propeller flew off, flips upside down, 40 feet in the air, God. and it pulls itself to the ground with the other three and slams and hits so hard it bounces 20 feet in the air. I remember you telling me that. I remember it happened early in the morning, and, like, no one was around. And I was just like, because <laughs> I was like, I was like, sweet, no one saw it. Right. And then that like, is embarrassing. And then I walk over and I'm like, well, maybe I got some footage up. Like, cool crash footage, yeah. right? It knocked the memory card out the first hit, so it didn't record. It just it didn't oh. save. And I'm like, what is the point of crashing if you, just, you can't share the crash on YouTube? It's just in your memory forever. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was because, um, and, and you might have planned this or, you know, maybe you didn't. I don't know. But when you started out in your videography and career, it was like shooting architectural uh, job sites for for your family's company, you know. Time lapses. Time, that yeah. Was the first thing I ever shot was a time lapse. Okay, yeah, because you had the weather cam and then you had the mm-hmm. GoPros and everything, so mm-hmm. you were shooting, which you know we're we're based on showing new clients like this is what we've done, this is what we can do, right? Or that's not really. We never really. We needed a YouTube channel. Like yeah. Every company that I was when I was in college, I graduated two thousand twelve. Pull that baby right you. up, right oh, up sorry. to you, right here. Right yeah, here. there you go. When I graduated college in 2012, um, I researched all the companies I wanted to join by mm-hmm. YouTube. I watched their corporate videos. Oh, okay, what, right, what, right. I wanted to know what they were about. And it was just an easy way, so I didn't have to read. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, tons of other college students are like this. And it, really, it just kind of started out as we needed social media presence. And we, we, we grew that from the ground up. We didn't have a Twitter. We didn't have LinkedIn. 
I think we had LinkedIn, but we yeah. didn't have a Twitter, Instagram, any of that. Right, MySpace. We, we built it, and we had we had a Facebook, but it had like three hundred uh, people. On and it. now it's what thousand? Four thousand yeah. three hundred. Right. So right. in four years, I grew it. I mean, f- over four thousand people with no money. No, right. there's no paid advertising or anything. Just normal hopping on. I posting think actually, something here. This month there. is the first time we use paid advertising. Really? Yeah. They we're trying to recruit more and more uh, steel and labor workers. Okay. There's a huge labor shortage in the U.S. right now. Really? Yeah. Why? It's Where's everybody going? Uh, I just it's not a it's not like a blue collar uh, workforce anymore. Oh, you know? right. Because. Yeah, it's just it's just a bad time for construction. Nobody wants to put in the work, and then nobody is like you know. You're talking like young college kids, like they don't want to. They no one's studying. Young college that. kids want to go straight to an office or mo- this millennial age. They want know. software companies. But I know I know a ton of young kids that yeah. like go into construction. They kill it and yeah. they they love it. Well, um, Pitt has a great construction program, but it's you know one thing they have a, a nice little deal yeah. with with Crossland, right? Exactly. Yeah. They have some sort of it's developmental. Hard, program. It's hard to find the right candidate for in the field work because um concrete is you know we have to have someone that's uh drug tested mm-hmm. and then we have to have someone that is maybe done it before or else we're teaching someone from scratch right or yeah so it really all kind of started uh, as a way to recruit those people and so and we also wanted to give people pride in their work we want to share what was going on right. not to gain clients but to give our people like uh, excitement and praise. Right. And so as soon as we started doing it, the pictures started flowing into our email box. Like they were like, yeah, throw this on Facebook, throw this on Facebook. Nice. And so many people have like hit us up and it just, it proves how much social media marketing goes. And then, uh, we needed that YouTube channel. And mm-hmm. so I was just like, well, we need to build a presence. I'm, I'm, I'm like, can I get a camera or something? <laughs> Cause I had never made a video before. I never touched a camera until right. 2013. And it just kind of hit. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so we went from uh, GoPros and time lapses to interviews to right, right. Uh, raw footage to 4K now. We've got a red. 6K, and baby. We fly drones. And now we're going to build our own drone program. What? Really? Yeah. Drone program for? For Crossland. We're gonna, I mean, like, we're going to teach the guys in the field like, to fly. To, to utilize them for like. Exactly. Construction wow. purposes. Because wow, some of our jobs are miles long. Oh, like wow. highways, yeah. highway jobs, they can go forever. Right. And the super can't just like be bouncing back and forth between his office and it, his trailer and yeah. stuff like that. And we can't get Wi-Fi that far out there for right. his emails and stuff. And he's got to be staying up to date. So if he can send the drone three yeah. miles down the road. Right. Man. And you can see the visualization from 300 feet, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing. You know, you love your drone. I love my drone. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's a great idea uh, to implement that sort of thing. Not only building off the social media backbone, but then also implementing new technologies because that will put you guys ahead. Especially if you could get a hold of like uh, infrared type cameras. Or yep, look into that. You can mm-hmm. do that on the Inspire actually. Yeah, you can get an they're infrared outrageous. camera. Yeah, I mean they're like what like more six than grand. a drone. They're yeah, six more than grand. Yeah, yeah, more than that's the drone. insane. But <laughs> can you imagine what you could do? I mean, I mean we have an infrared camera at really? Crossland. But um, not a drone. It's not a drone. Just it's like just a, like a pair of goggles that are like yeah. the size of my face. Like, it's huge. <laughs> but it's, it's a camera? Uh, it's a camera, and it's a... Like a uh, binocular Binocular vision. kind okay, of It's yeah. very, like, stealth army tech. And like, I think my dad actually keeps it, like, under his <laughs> desk or something. <laughs> Benny, like, do you keep it under your desk? He does. He keeps it pair of infra- <laughs> Because why not? You Dude, know? because it's freaking cool. My dad has the weirdest Do you know why, it, uh, <laughs> why they use that? Like for, uh, for it's to see like leaks and insulation oh, okay. or air going yeah. out of the roof or something like that. Um, <laughs> still can't detect leaks in roofs, but you know whatever. Yeah. It's Makes still sense. hard to do. We're getting better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What What are you guys ranked in the U.S. as far as construction or for like right now? You know, like last I heard when when I was shooting the uh, I think we're NEO speech. It was I like think we're eighty five. Yeah, I was gonna say it was somewhere in the eighties. I want to say we're eighty five. Yeah, which is amazing. Yeah. No, it's. Really awesome. We broke the top 100, I think, in 2011 or something like that. And then we've just been, I mean, ever since I can remember, they've just been climbing. And I mean, they just, all those people work so hard. It's just unbelievable. Absolutely. You have a really good crew. It's fun to kind of tell stories about people that work hard, you know? Yeah. Like, they love it and I get to interview. I mean, they hate being interviewed, though. (laughs) Why is that? Nobody likes to talk into the camera. When there was a culture, like, in the... There's a culture in the construction industry in general Mm -hmm. to uh, stay safe. But at the same time, 
you do, you kind of want to avoid the inspectors or the OSHA. OSHA was really bad in like uh, Arkansas and uh, Kansas for a really long time, and they were always just like on you, right? really? on everyone all yeah. the time. And so like they'd avoid like cameras and stuff. <laughs> all that training from like the '90s and '80s right. is carried over right. <laughs> to my day. <laughs> I really want to wear like a shirt that says I'm not with any government agency. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> Dude, people scatter when they see the camera. We literally had to yes. bamboozle them. It's getting better. Okay. <laughs> they're, they, like, they're like, oh, no, that's Colin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they trust you now. You've, you've gained their trust. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm getting there. But yeah, so yeah, it's been great. I and you never planned on doing this sort of stuff, right? No, honestly, like I never expected to... Uh, ever fall into because i was i studied for finance and uh family enterprises right uh two separate things apparently which, really yeah hmm. family enterprises that's the whole reason i went to florida for school is that that was Stetson. the one school that really had a entire major program devoted to family businesses and wow. understanding them right and the you know, like the psychology and the uh all the like the business methods and advantages that right families have and so that's why i went down there I didn't study for video, not at and, all. Right. I don't remember any sort of video Picked up talk a, or anything, you know? I remember, the only camera I remember having is when you and I were in sixth grade, and we went to the, the bridge for a lock-in, <laughs> and I had the camera, and you, like, run up to the camera. You didn't know I was filming, like, most of the night. You're like, Colin, I've been busting my ass all night, and we don't have it on tape. <laughs> and I'm like, well, let's go. Like, <laughs> and so the whole night, <laughs> it was well, just... You breaking your board over like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I was so good. <laughs> nah, it was fun times. Those were the good days. Yeah, that, that's how we bonded. That's how we first bonded. I made a video at Columbus uh, uh, Junior High with you in it at the end. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? It was like some presentation thing. It was like you just do, try, doing ollies off a bridge oh, into right. gravel, which you were never going to land it because it was gravel. <laughs> it was but gravel. it looked cool. <laughs> you were like, yeah, why not? And Go. That's the only camera I had, and that was a tape camera. Right, that was the DVC <laughs> or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those great cameras. That's what we started on too. Skateboarding videos. Just I remember I made a uh, my first video ever, and I still have like a piece of it on a VHS tape. Was no my dad? Yeah, my dad and I took like play dinosaurs and little Jurassic Park action figures, and then <gasps> we, had, we made like a little. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, they ex <laughs> like the babies escaped, and then they find the big T Rex, and it kills everybody. You like those? Uh, t you like those guys from Raiders of the Lost Ark? They remade the whole movie. Like yeah, at home. Yeah, 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 basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was on like one of the big camcorders that went straight to VHS. Like you put it on your shoulder. Oh like, man, that, that's where I oh, started. Oh yeah, my dad used to record like yeah. me and plays and stuff like right. that. Right. Yeah. Just, I mean, that was like an RPG on your shoulder. Oh, like, yeah. That's my son. <laughs> Wait, were you weren't you in a play one time? A couple plays in church. Yeah, in the remember. in the youngin days. That, yeah, the young it was days. before you though. It was like elementary because you came in middle school. I know my dad has these tapes and I'm going to find them <laughs> and I'm going to post them. <laughs> you should just remix it. Just like do loops and whatnot. Because uh, that, that would be embarrassing stuff on me too. Is that, yeah, right. It's probably worse. There's a lot of there. <laughs> So you go to Stetson. You have a good time down there. You learn, you learn it. <laughs> That's as much as I would talk about that. Yeah, so I went to school for finance. I never thought I'd ever fall into video. It was kind of a blessing really. I, I mean, I... I think I found my niche. Like mm -hmm. I, I like it. I wish I could focus on one specific aspect of mm -hmm. it at a time. I can't. I have to right. focus on all of them at the right. same time. But you're still like you're still growing, and you're still on a path where maybe someday you will be able to do that. I'm definitely growing. I didn't think I was this year mm -hmm. after because I I had finished Stoa, which was my first documentary, mm -hmm. premiered it, and then when you finish a project, you have this empty hole in your life oh, you, yeah. that you dedicated right. all this. And so I'm just like, what do I do? Yeah. And so as soon as it was over, my uh, uncle orders me to go out and uh, do some do drone footage at three different sites every two weeks Wow! in different cities. So it was like bing, 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 like right. across the map. And so I did that every two weeks. I would go out there, I would fly a drone for eight minutes, and then I would leave. <laughs> and you'd be done. And that was it. Right. And I was like, this seems like a waste of time. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's about it. So me. I had two productive weeks a year this year. And, but it turned out, um, I got a call from my uncle and he wanted to go down to this, I'm not going to say names, but this, uh, famous baseball players, uh, ranch. It was in the middle of Kansas. Were, did, were those the Snapchats from the other day? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Quiet. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> I won't say their names. Yeah. I don't want Anyway, so we went out there and he just built a motocross park and it turns out that, uh, my uncle's motocross team, uh, he does that. Separately, he has a team. Yes, he's he 
uh, retired from Crossland. I think I told you. Oh, this. okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, okay. Yeah, my uncle Chris left Crossland. He started his own. His, it was always his dream to start a uh, motocross team, and he did. And wow. he's been running it for three years. What? It's really successful. Is that like, like it's professional? Really cool. Yeah. What like, was it called? It's called uh, Ride365.com. No, Ride365. Oh, they said Ride Through. Oh, it's cool. <laughs> Uh, it's the the numbers three sixty five. Yeah, I'm so, so sorry. he starts this he starts this motocross team, and he's like, "Hey, we're gonna be out there too," yes. and so Boom. went out there to film, and all that drone flying I did uh, paid off because I was following those guys right behind them as nice. they flew. I mean, I it was probably the best flight I ever had in my life. I was just sitting there with my, I had like my two little cousins next to me and they're like, wow, you're really good. I'm like, wow, I'm really good. I've been doing this. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, definitely. There's a learning curve on that freaking drone. Yeah. And I didn't realize that that all paid off. Like I'll go into those sites every two weeks for an entire year. Right. Really paid off. Yeah. And I, I think I fly really, really well. Yeah, definitely a really, really good drone flyer. This website is Freaking cool. Yeah. This Looks is like all he his sells stuff. a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So he has a team. He's it, selling. Yeah. He started a dot com with some other partners. He partnered with Honda, which wow. is really, like, it's really cool. And they kind of partner a team together. Like, uh, and you'll see, like, in their photos, like, Team Crossland and yeah. stuff like that. And, yeah. And actually, I met all the That's cool. teammates. I've seen one of their tournaments. I went to Vegas. He took me to Vegas one time and we saw them. Uh, Competed Supercross, Monster Supercross oh, tournament. Oh, it so was awesome. awesome. It was so cool. And these guys are just the nicest dudes really? you'll ever meet in your life. Uh, I, I mean, I was just like blown away. I was like, I thought they were going to be like athletes, you know. I was like, yeah, what a man. Yeah, you know? right. And they were like, hey, what's up, dude? Like, like and they, You're they, normal. Like, came out, shook my hand, wanted to know all about me and stuff. Oh, and, that's like, awesome. And then I was just like, hey, you're more interesting than me. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about me, more about you. Yeah, and... Uh, I thought it was really cool because they all, like, pray before they go out on the course. Oh, cool. Yeah, they all say a prayer. And it was, it was just really cool to yeah, see that. Yeah, because they're riding freaking monster bikes that yeah. could crush and kill you. And yeah, and, the, and they actually had my little cousin out there. And no. he's riding his, He's, like, eight or nine. So they're doing uh, the monster cross. They're doing the race, right? Yeah, well, th- this guy just built – Yeah, they're, this guy just built a course in his backyard like the that I went to go film. Right, right. And he just wanted to test it out. And so, like – Sure. My uncle shows up with a semi, like at this guy's house, like, <laughs> what's up? <Yeah. laughs> Where do we park? <laughs> and, <laughs> That's always a good sign. Yeah, it was it was really cool, and uh, I mean, all that experience totally paid off. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. But you, a lot of that time uh, when you spend doing worthless stuff, and you're just like, in fact, the the first line of the blog that I'm writing right now is you. Writing a blog. I'm writing a blog. Yeah. What's it called? Starting a blog. That's a great question. I haven't figured out a name well, for it. Well, you'll know when it comes to you. Yeah, but I, I got the first post ready, and I'm just like on the second draft, so it's almost ready to post. Nice. But the first line is, you know, you hope you always, you hope your hard work pays off. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you're in the middle of the hard work, and you're just like, if this doesn't play out, this sucks. You know, <laughs> like, holy crap. So, yeah, I can totally relate with that. Yeah. And then when you finally see the fruits of your labor, it, it, it may be the best feeling yeah. Of all of life. I think whenever you uh, create or, you know, you go out on a limb mm. and you like at that premiere, when I heard that applause, like, and everyone, and, like everyone stood up. I just, I was just like so emotional. Yeah. I was just like, oh, right. Oh, so it felt so cool. Yeah. You know? And, uh, but really what felt like I remember back, like making my first documentary was amazing. Like that felt better. Like when I was just, in a room mm-hmm. versus myself, mm-hmm. like like my my mind versus the computer and the footage. Like mm-hmm. that's that's what I go into the studio thinking. And then just think about how many nights, just night after night after <laughs> night after night. You know, that none of us saw. We just got to see this nice chopped finished product, and we're like, "Whoa, that was amazing!" Yet yeah, you, you don't go see back, you don't see all the bricks I threw like <laughs> in a wall and like you know the cliche blood, sweat, and tears. You know, blood, yeah. sweat, and alcohol for you. You know, it's just like, I have this uh, tennis ball in my office. And well, you had. I had. <laughs> That's actually true. I had a tennis ball in my office, and I would go out, and to de-stress, I would uh, throw the tennis ball at this brick wall in our parking lot, and it would bounce back and bounce yeah. back. And it was like, good, because like, I stayed outside, and right. it was in the middle of the night. Yeah. So that looks creepy already. <laughs> like, 3 a.m., some kid just throwing a ball, gets some... La, Reminds la, me of, like, 30 seconds la, to Mars. La, la. <laughs> like, hey, guys. Come play. <laughs> I'm lonely. Exactly. 
So <laughs> you can see like the like one night it was raining. You can see like how the green and the tennis ball oh, like had been on coated the wall. The wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because I was so stressed, I was out there that much. <laughs> it was nuts. That's actually, you know, a good melodic, just kind of over and over again. No point to it. It's almost like those little sand mm-hmm. uh, gardens where you're just raking sand in the middle yes. of the table. Yeah. You know, just to rake sand. Yeah, my friend has one of those on his desk. Does it's he like use a little it? baby one? I guess he's I like, guess. yes, it helps me calm down. I'm like, you don't use this. <laughs> don't lie to me. <laughs> It's like those those balls that you hold in your hand and you twist or whatever. Push ups, push ups is another one. That's what I do. Really? Like you just rep out. My office is kind of like it's kind of small. Yeah. And I'm cool with that. Like I I don't need much space and I like it very dark. Yeah. Inside my studio, and so uh, I'll just be in there like a jail cell. Like the door will be closed and people walk by and see me doing push ups and like (laughs) I'm sure they think I'm insane. (laughs) I am 100 percent sure they think I'm insane. But whenever they need a video, like. That you right, know, it happens. So, That's a good idea. I'm gonna yeah. put push-ups on my agenda. Push-ups is good. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of just, I don't think I ever. Li- I think I suck into my laptop. That's what happens. Mm. I turn because I have the L-shaped desk. So when I'm editing, I'm like, okay, I need a break. I just turn to my laptop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. do something else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should and go take a walk. Turn. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I should go take a walk or something. It'd be much better. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, definitely. I think the creative process in itself is a beautiful thing. And I remember the feeling of that meaning more to me than that applause. Mm -hmm. And I think if you love what you're doing more than you do, like showing the finished product, I think you're probably onto something or something Mm -hmm. like that. Right. Like I like showing my stuff. Yeah. But uh, I think it's just gotten to the point where I'm more concerned about what I think of it. That's than good. The day I think of That's it. good. Yeah. And like you like you said, you're more um, in love with the process exactly. rather than the outcome. You know? Yeah. If I, you focus on the outcome, then the process suffers and then yeah. inevitably the, the outcome suffers. I uh, I don't really work with anyone, which is kind of the bad part about it. Like I have like I have You kinda wanna collaborate. Oh, absolutely. Like if I knew that I had someone there editing or oh, uh, organizing yeah. while I was out in the field right. traveling right. for like a week and someone was around the social, I would feel so much better. Caleb Clark is I'd probably screaming never come in his I know, truck I know, right I know, now. I know. I'll do it! He's my first call. I swear. <laughs> he's freaking blood. He, and the best part is, is like he wouldn't even have to leave Wichita. Like I'd rather right. have him out there. And right. then when he's, if he's ready to come to KC, he can just come. because of the internet connectivity of like the speeds and everything. Yeah, of today. exactly. Yeah, like from Wichita to uh, Kansas City, Google Fiber actually has like a, a dedicated line wow. out there. Yeah, because That's I don't know cool. why. It's I think the Koch brothers want it or something. That's my guess. What? I don't know. Here, side, side question. Why do you think um, like Google has invested Google Fiber into Kansas City? And like you said, in a witch first one? Yeah. Well, like why is, the, why is it the Midwest? Why didn't they pick like a, a, a metropolis like Los Angeles or New York or Miami? Why did they go with the Midwest? I mean, just curious. I would say there's really no clear answer, but I would say that Kansas City had the infrastructure capable to uh, integrate like Plus, you're starting from the center of the country. Yeah. That's a good place okay. to start, that and you spread sense. outward. And they don't want to go to St. Louis because that's the next Detroit. So it is. <laughs> well, once that, once that fucking earthquake hits, oh, goodbye. Yeah. goodbye. St. Louis is gone. Oh, did you Oh, did you feel that, by the way? Uh, no, I was sleeping. Oh, okay. You slept through an earthquake. <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. that happened when I was in Vegas. So I Earthquake? Did, I, oh, you were out there when yeah, it happened. Yeah, I was out in Vegas when it happened. No, um, people said they felt it. It was and you knock knock things off the walls. Yeah, people in KC said they felt it. I'm like, what? did you really though? I'm like, <laughs> it was a little shake. <laughs> Whatever. That was your neighbors. Anyway, um, yeah, the middle of the country makes sense. You know, they can sprawl out from there. I think it was just a good place for them to start, and mm-hmm. uh, Kansas City is really kind of becoming like the uh, next. Bi- I mean, it's exploding right now. Mm. Downtown is exploding. There's a t- there's a tower going up two blocks down from my apartment. Nice. There's uh, three or four different renovated, like, uh, condo, uh, old like buildings pl- being, pl- yeah. yeah, the old power and light building, which was one of the first buildings in KC, got bought and is now remodeled into, like, nice luxury lofts, condos, stuff like yeah. that, and it's really cool. Right. However, it kind of made me upset, because I found out by trying to break in there and go film it. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly. I wasn't there. <laughs> but I tried to break in there. And I was like, oh, close for renovation. I'm like, well, it's not going to be cool if, like, all the old stuff's gone. Like, yeah, no <laughs> joke. That was one of the first buildings uh, that, like, a big 
KC politician built, and it's an awesome site, and I would have loved it. So KC is exploding cool. at this point. Right, right. And uh, Google Fiber is in uh, three different cities now. All in, like, the Kansas the City US. area? No, oh, okay. the U.S. What, uh, Kansas, is it uh, Oregon? Two, I think there's two other cities. I think so, too. I, I think mean, Oregon and maybe, uh, was it North Carolina? No. It, was, it, like, it wasn't cities you'd think it would be. Salt Just Lake like Kansas City, City is in a city you would think they'd start in. Uh, then there's nine. There's Atlanta, Charlotte, Nashville, Phoenix, oh, Portland, right. Raleigh, Salt Lake City, San Antonio, and San Jose. But wow, that's that, way more. That doesn't mention Atlanta. Kansas City. Why Atlanta? Right? <laughs> Dude, Atlanta, speaking of blowing up, Atlanta's blowing up as far as uh, the film industry. Yes. You know, everything ran away to Atlanta yes. from California. And Texas. And Texas. Yeah. And, um, well, I guess Breaking Bad ran away to New Mexico, but yeah, they well, put yeah. them on the map. That's crazy. But, uh, yeah, here it is. Yep, started in KC. And mm-hmm. I would have loved... 20 Kansas suburbs with the first three years. Yeah, and they did. They expanded fast. And then they expanded to companies, and now the company has... Crossland has... That's the whole reason I want to go up to KC. For Google Fiber? Oh, that <laughs> speed? You have no idea oh, what no, I can I'm do. I'm right there with you, man. So I might have caused a little bit of a blackout in our office. Really? <laughs> Allegedly, <laughs> if anyone's listening to this. I had this idea that you could use internet speed to process graphics. And hmm. so I put, it was a test, and it was in the <laughs> middle of the night. And so this is really bad. And I, I know none of my coworkers are going to listen to this, so it works out. Good, good. I kind of decided, I was just like, all right, well, I, I, so I signed up for this service as a trial. I called the guy, and I was like, hey, let me try this out. And they're like, oh, yeah, man, we just have a bunch of servers lined up here. And uh, it takes all, like, your process, it links up with, like, Adobe, like, really? a, cu- like a CUDA engine, basically. Right, right. Adi- or, uh, yeah, like yeah. a Niv- 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 NVIDIA, I can't say NVIDIA. It. NVIDIA. Yeah. NVIDIA CUDA engine. And it uses a bunch of processors, and then it beams the info back to you on a fiber line. What? And Kansas City is the only place you could possibly, like, right. handle that, right. except for those cities now. But, like, and so I did it, and I used all of the company servers in Kansas City to do it. And, I mean, it was like that, but as soon as I did it, it's, the server sucked so much energy out of the wall altogether. The power dropped? The power? It flickered. Like, it flickered, and then it was... <laughs> Isn't that amazing, dude? <laughs> How much power and energy that takes just to do something like that? And so the that's pow- like CERN. You whole, just you created CERN. Whole power goes out in the office, and I'm like, uh, it's like two a.m. and I'm like, um, help. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do prefer to work at night, like late night, like almost overnight. Yeah, you're an overnight. No, guy. I love overnight. Yeah, it's, is that just because you don't get interrupted? You know, no one's coming and knocking at your door. You can do as many push-ups out, as you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it started out as. Uh, I'll do, I'll do I'll start at like noon and then I'll work probably to like 11 a.m. the next day. So mm-hmm. 23 hours, 26 hours. I could stay there that long, right? And stay in that edit room and keep making things. And I could pump out videos faster. Well, it's getting harder now. Yeah. And so I, the <laughs> longest I can do probably now is like 19 to 20. Gee. And I just I go in probably at six, and then I won't leave until maybe like 10 a.m. to like. N- I mean, I've stayed till 9 p.m. That's just because you enjoy it. Just because you sit down and it's just, here we go. This I enjoy is, it, and like in, like, it's also a necessity lab. because yeah. I have a really, I, like, they don't think I have a big workload. Hey, he pumps those out in, like, five right, minutes. Right, I don't think people Why really understand. Like Why do people yeah, I don't think people underestimate understand. video production? Why do people think that, like, you can just pump out a video in a day? And yeah. granted, I have done that before. But, sure. But it was to prove that I could. Like, I wanted to beat my record. Right, but your and eyes was were bloodshot. really good, know? and we got a job off of it. So nice. That was nice. Yeah. So I came, I came in, like, 23 hours or 24 hours oh later the next God. day and slammed a USB drive down on the floor. I'm like, done. <laughs> Connor, are you okay? Personal <laughs> record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get some breakfast. But I think it just became, it kind of like evolved. Like I can kind of be myself in my office. Yeah. Like I like take my shoes off, walk around. I, like I pace a lot. Like I'll mm. pace around the office. Because things are rendering. And yeah. Whatnot. And like I'll be thinking and I'm like, well, I don't know what to do next. So I'm yeah. like, well, how, do, how do I do this? And so I'll be just be listening to it over and over again, pacing back and forth, back and forth yeah. around the office. And then I don't work with anybody. So I really don't have to be there during the day. Right. So I can, I pr- if I'm a one-man show, I get to choose when my one-man show does its shit. Right, In right. In my opinion. Right, right. Makes and sense. They've been, uh, at first they were like, Colin, we don't want you doing that. That's unhealthy. 
going overnight? And yeah, they're like, they're like, oh, you don't need to do that. That's, it's really like no more night shifts. And I'm like, okay, well, I have two different managers that need a, two videos tomorrow. Yeah. How do you think? How else do you think I should get this done? <laughs> and so no nights went out the window real fast. Right. <laughs> so right. they so didn't care. Explained the yeah. logistics of the. But issue. you know, so you edit at night. Yeah, I like to edit at night. I like to edit in the morning, and then yeah, morning or night. Preferably, because no, nothing, no one bothers you. No, you know, my wife, you know, goes to bed or watches Netflix. So Your I'm, wife, that's so weird. Isn't that cool? I, it's so cool. I like it. It sounds so official. It, it is. It's I'm like, still get not away used from to my it. wife. <laughs> I, it's so awesome Give when, me I, back when my I tell wife. people like at work, when I, like when I say I'm serving a bottle of wine, I'm like, this is a bottle that my wife really likes. <laughs> Ooh, let me listen to you. Like you have more knowledge. I if you had said so my girlfriend likes yeah. this one, uh, no, he no. has a relation. Or oh, what is it? A commitment issues? Because mm-hmm. I can't marry my wife. No, but uh, I didn't kill my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so much better than I didn't Sounds kill so my girlfriend. Much. I sound so adult. You took, you, took <laughs> vows, you took vows for that woman. Yeah. So I, I, I think my brain is more active at night mm-hmm. because, like, I many a time I've woken up out of sleep and started like I'm like. Like, whenever I need to solve a major problem, I yeah. usually s- try to sleep on it. And then I'll wake up at 2 a.m. Like, like I just came out of, like, a zombie dream. Right. right. Ah, 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 and I'll start writing on the window. I'll start writing on the windows, which is <laughs> weird when You people... throw tennis balls against the wall. You write on the windows. Yeah. <laughs> you do push-ups in your office. Yeah, I Tony fully admit. Stark, <laughs> I fully admit I'm, like, a crazy person whenever I'm on to something. Right. That's okay that you just pursue it with ruthless passion. You know, yeah. who, who cares what people think about you? You have a job to do. You have a, a problem to solve. I remember when I was making Stoa, and I was trying to make it 4K. I wanted, mm-hmm. to, I wanted it to be 4K. Let's, let's talk Stoa real quick. Stoa is your... Was oh, it okay. your premiere documentary? That was the first real production right. I think I ever put out that was... It yeah, was, we, st- we did funded it off a Kickstarter mm-hmm. campaign. Uh, and raised like, $10,000 in what? In 2014, we raised $13,000. And then we... Went to Kenya and then Haiti like three or four times. <laughs> and Ke- yeah, Kenya, Haiti. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that. Yeah. And then Indiana. With several to different uh, teams. Some people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You had uh, help from Brazil. Yep. Um, we had people from Brazil come and help. We had uh, a bunch of people go down there. But I just really followed these people around. I told their story. It was it was fun. Like. I- and at first, it was more of, like, I don't think it was planned. You can correct me if I'm wrong. It wasn't really planned. It was, like, Wes Davis, the pastor of RFC, was, hey, come with me to Kenya, because you have some cameras, and you're like, yeah, sure. That's, and then it yeah. just kind of built I showed that. up on his doorstep one yeah, day. That's pretty right. much what happened. I had a turkey voucher Oops. from Crossland, and I'm like, I don't need a turkey voucher. And I'm like, maybe Wes knows somebody. And, I mean, that's the voice I heard in my head. I'm like, right. maybe Wes knows someone. And I'm like, okay, I'll just go over there at 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> and so hey. I did. And then uh, I was, I just walked in there, and I was just like, "Do you need someone to go with you to Haiti?" And he's like, "Yeah, absolutely." I'm like, "Well, cool. I'd love to film it." He's nice. Like, I'm like, "Well, let me know what you think." He's like, "The answer is already yes." I'm wow. Like, oh, and so did that over and over and over again. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then we had a pre- then we had a premiere, which went great, and they ended up raising uh, like fifty thousand dollars off that premiere event in itself. The one that you showed the finished. Mm-hmm. Full yep. length. People wrote checks that night, probably Jeez. for around fifty thousand dollars. Wow! Say. And that was dedicated to the Stoa mission. Yes. Not, yes. Okay. Nice. Like, uh, so, and that'll go to free medical care, yeah. eye care, uh, pastors' conferences, leadership That's conferences. Yeah. Fifty thousand. Yeah. West uh, West Davis runs this whole organization with him, and uh, he has a board of directors mm-hmm. that uh, tell him what the best idea to do, what the money <sighs> is, kind of thing. And he keeps none of it for himself. None of it. Right. This is, he did, I mean, gives he away his even, time, travels, you know, I don't exactly. know how many times a year he goes overseas. To, and, it, and the church lets him go. Not for glorious places. You know, yeah, Haiti's I mean, not the... He, go, he doesn't go to, like, the nice no. like, vacation. Right. Like, ooh, I'm helping people. Right. Like, no, this is like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get shanked. Yeah. Like, in, in Africa, that or was probably the Gerardia worst. Or or something. Yeah. Africa was probably the most scared I've ever been. Kenya? Yeah. Because we went to the Kibera slum. Right. It looked rough. Which is basically... A uh, million people living in a two square mile radius, and they're all living on a dollar a day. Mm-hmm. And that was probably the most scared I was. No, but nothing, nothing really happened. Or well, a journalist the week before had his uh, throat cut, and so we were protected by like local gangsters that wow. need that medical care and help. Right, though. right. And that's why they protect it. And so they, all these people from shady backgrounds or like in what we would consider criminals, right. yeah, protect Wes. 
because they need him. Right. For their kids, for their wives. And Wes, you know, he's he's not there to, like, uh, you know, judge anybody. He's there to just help right. and show that someone loves them. And that's that's that was the whole idea. Like, a positive message. Mm-hmm. That's That was the whole point of the documentary. And it went really well. And that was my first production. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great turnout. It was a great, great documentary. I really enjoyed Thank it. You. Yeah, Appreciate it was it. fantastic. In fact, I wanted to watch the trailer, and you could do a little commentary oh, over no. the trailer if you want. <laughs> a little podcast exclusive, and I'll I'll, I'll put this uh, the URL in the in the bio so everyone can watch the. Is the full thing on What's YouTube? Is the full oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. You can watch the full documentary on. Uh, I, I imagine YouTube, it's on Vimeo. Vimeo. It's yeah. on Stowe's website. It's on my website. It's everywhere. Oh, here we got a drone shot. So this is Haiti. This is a drone shot over Haiti. I lo- I've never done a commentary before. This well, so here fun. we go. This is your yeah. commentary. This is uh, Pastor Mula speaking, mm-hmm. and he runs an orphanage of, like, I think 50-plus kids or something. Okay. And then he has another orphanage, I think, that he runs. It's unbelievable. Like, That's cool. And then th- these... People have been to America. They've been to River Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah. talks and whatnot. I've seen. Yeah. Wes will fly them in. And, uh, you know, sometimes they just need to get away and have a vacation. And so Wes brings them in, lets them stay with them. And takes is this them where out. you stayed? This, is this the orphanage right that's there? That's the orphanage. Okay. But that's not where we stayed. We oh, stayed okay. down the road. You'll see okay. it at the end. Uh, so are these red shots right here? Yeah. Okay. This is, uh, look I made this trailer like literally in two days. I had two, it day- looks great. I had two days to do it. And I uh, wasn't near where I wanted to be with it. Oh, of course, but I just I didn't have a choice. I was like, I Trailers promised, are cut I fast. promised a trailer, and I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just the technical side, you're shooting with the red, you're shooting with the GoPro. GoPro. Anything else? Did you take your uh, Black Magic with you? The Inspire one. The Inspire. And no, I, no, no Black Magic. Okay, so your handheld camera. What about your? Well, you had a Philip one time with the DSLR. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's one of his shots, actually, right there. Nice. Kids walking down steps. <laughs> So is, this, give, is this the inside of the orphanage right No, here? that's that's actually the church. That's you see that church. flicker? That's what happens when you have to render real fast. Yep, yep. <laughs> no one noticed, so. Nice. So you have people of your team. Looks like they're handing out things. Speaking of which, that flicker. Oh, there's Philip with the DSLR. <laughs> <laughs> that flicker, that's one of the reasons I woke up at 2 a.m. to think of things, because my system broke down, and it couldn't process 4K footage. Oh, crap. So I woke up in the middle of the night one night, and I was like, I know what to do. And I <laughs> sketched out this huge like diagram of what I should hook in where and what, like what would take I weight off the that. CPU. I can't, I can't remember that. I, I was just like, where did this come from? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. I mean, it still works today. Like, nice. So when you go to these things, um, go the, to India next. When you, we'll, we'll talk about that. In oh, a second. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you're building like pews or what yeah. This, this was they were building church pews because okay. uh, they brought people just kind of to because that's what they needed. They they, they were like, something. all right, we need church pews because we have no place for these people to sit when yeah. they come to church. And I'm like, oh, cool, we, we got can, it. We can do it. And so they did. They brought tools and they uh, they taught the kids like how to put things together. Oh, that's so cool. That's that's see, they don't just do all the work. Like the kids. Are learning as the community they go. is involved. Yeah, and s- some of these people are really good teachers. Yeah. Like, even though there's a language barrier, right? They're, they're still teaching them. That's a great shot, right that's, there. Following the that's soccer Phil's ball. glide cam, right? Oh there. yeah, that's nice. No, oh, there he is. Yeah. Oh, that's you. That's yeah, you. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I usually don't do that. I don't like putting myself in my own production. I had to do it for the documentary, though. Because nothing he, else tells the story than someone that was there. I was say, well, I mean, and you're part of the process too, mm-hmm. so it's not like you're just kind of randomly showing up. I had to be like, kind of like a narrator. Yeah, just like kind you of know, shepherd it. These guys are helping build things. You know, Wes is giving speeches, and but your your part is doing the video. So exactly. I mean, yeah, it wasn't out of place or anything. This is probably like one of my best shots ever. Is the ending where this I'm one just right. flying the drone and they they're walking. Yeah, I like that too. Where are you? Phil's my spotter too at this moment. Like he's wearing God, HD goggles, he, and as I'm flying back like this, he's just like, "Oh, Colin! Oh, Colin! Oh, oh Colin!" That's awesome. You're like, is it good? Is it good? Yeah, oh, I like, like you yeah. pull it. You, you pull it out a little. Yeah, yeah, and that's them walking away from the orphanage. Nice. nice. And it wasn't January 2016. It was like April. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's okay. It's your first one. So close. I'll put that. I'll put the trailer. So yeah, stowe has got a, a, a YouTube channel and everything. Yeah. I, uh, there it is right there. I the whole doc, 22, all 22 minutes, 4K. Yep. Nice. 
I uh, I have like I think a thousand people have seen that oh, on I my Vimeo it. page. Oh, I so. believe it. It's probably more than that because the premiere alone had what? Oh yeah, a hundred people, two hundred probably two hundred people. Yeah, it was. I, I couldn't believe how many people came out. It was I really was, cool. It was really, and then the after party, which was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we stayed up till four in the morning. It like, was well. I mean, we were celebrating, and everyone had work the next day. I felt so like uh, it was, I was so grateful. Everyone came out and they like stayed and partied till four oh, in the morning. Dude, all your good buddies. Um, what was what was that one cat's name? Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin's a Kevin Gang. Yeah, he was cool. He Yo. flew in from New York. Yeah, Phil flew in from Florida. Uh, That's some dedication. Everyone made me. Everyone that couldn't be there made me send them the link as soon as I showed it. Kind nice. of thing. They're like, text us the link as soon as you play it. Nice. And I did, and then it was so great because like it, like credits are rolling at the actual premiere, and people are texting me. That was awesome. Oh, I'm like, that's... whoa! You watched the whole thing, like, right? It's nuts. Yeah, and then people are coming up to you, giving you hugs, patting you on the back. Yeah, just exactly. Overflow of love. Just too much. <laughs> <laughs> so the next next with Stoa um, is India. India, yeah. I don't really, I don't have a lot of details. Yeah. I don't know when I'm going. I don't, I, I just said today that I would go if they needed somebody. Are you going to do a sequel? I t- yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> that's why I text Wes. I was like, I was like, Stoa 2, the porch strikes back. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that is awesome. Stoa goes to India. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't know an Indian tune. Yep. <laughs> what? What's an Indian tune? Um, like, um, they have that. Give me one. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe. Don't play one. <laughs> I can't believe you actually got that. <laughs> Everyone in. <laughs> Here, I'm going to dive. I'm just going to get one real quick so we can get us in the mood. Indian classical music. Oh, my gosh. There we go. An That's it. An hour right there. of it? Yeah, dude. We got to listen to this whole thing. No. Here it is. Oh, please turn it off. This is what you got to play for Stoa 2. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wes Davis, and this is India. Please don't. Um, we are here. <laughs> Do you know what you're going to be doing? Like, you know, Haiti was building things and helping this orphanage. Is there something particular in India, or is this kind of more like a... You know what really bothers me about the whole Stoa documentary is I knew I had a time limit. Like, you can't make an mm-hmm. hour thing about that. It's tw- like my final runtime was 22 minutes, mm-hmm. and it's probably 18 minutes with credits, mm-hmm. or without credits. I mean. Yeah. And so... I really felt bad because I left out two key interviews with two other organizations and I wanted to show how they all kind of work together and not in a competitive way. What like Wes works for two of them mm-hmm. and then uh, another organization fountains of hope sells to water. Uh, what am I trying to say? Water sells wells. Yeah. Like so. water uh, treatment. Oh, like, okay. Right. For pure water, pure, yeah. water, pure, water, water, pure, Ah, water purification systems. Yes. Got it. <laughs> and uh, I, and he sells them at cost to those organizations. Oh, wow. They bring them over. Or that guy himself goes down there and makes them. Nice. Yeah. And that, that's the uh, Indiana or is that Brazil? Mm-hmm. That's, that's in, the Indiana. It's in India. Okay, yeah. Which was Indiana. Wes's mentor, right? Indian, at one point. Indiana is going to get really confusing Indiana, if I make a sequel. India. <laughs> <laughs> I was, but the point is I always felt bad because I, did, I wasn't able to include them. I just kind of focused on Stoa, and I left those two really mm. good interviews behind, and mm-hmm. it still haunts me. I mm-hmm. still have them, and I won't delete them. Kind mm. of thing. I actually haven't deleted any maybe, Stoa footage. Maybe, no, you never delete that. No. Maybe I director's saved. cut? You know, maybe like a little bit of like, a, like um, um, on, a, on a DVD, you have the extras. Mm-hmm. Maybe just like the uncut I can interviews, that, yeah. you know, or something? I, yeah. Just so they wouldn't go to waste? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, can, I should. I just, I think those guys deserve it. If nothing else, they deserve a video that they can market and yeah, stuff. And right. I still want to make that for them, but maybe when I get fired one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds like things are good. Things are moving along for, you know, a possible, uh, kind of the same thing that you did for Crossland as far as the social media, mm-hmm. um, the YouTube channel. It's kind of the same thing happening for Stoa. You know, you're giving a voice, you're telling a story yeah. that is easily consumed by the consumer, you know, in a, in a flick of a, of a mouse button, you know, exactly, and they yeah. can watch it. Oh, that's what Stoa is about. Hey, I like it. I'm going to contribute or uh, contribute financially, or I'm going to contribute with my time or mm-hmm. whatever, you know. So people can get involved. They know about you, and you and know you're, yeah. The, the and share it, button's one click away. I like to share the good stuff. Like mm-hmm. you know, you see all those terrible documentaries. It's like people that like are they're like, oh, I love watching those terrible documentaries <laughs> of people suffering. Yeah. 
I want to give oh, like a yeah. hopeful message. Yeah, I'm like, right. hey, these people are going down there, right. and uh, they have really good contacts that want to help out their community, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Right. Americans and people from other countries in their communities working together. Yeah. And I think that's the way it should be. It's also not like a giant conglomerate of like, exactly. Uh, we're the Red Cross and we're yes. helping out. It's a hometown, tiny little Southeast Kansas type mm-hmm. thing. That's and there are in conjunction thousands of these little organizations yeah. all over the world doing right. this. Right. And you don't hear those stories. No, because no. No. they don't have the budget for it. They don't have this talent for it or whatnot. Or maybe they don't have the time for it. And it's it. not entertainingly like yeah. appealing right. to the mass audience. Netflix is like, no, nah, yeah. you know, we'll buy Making a Murder or whatnot. <laughs> something that's <laughs> exactly. entertaining, not maybe something that's beneficial and changing mm-hmm. the world, changing the perception of a place like Haiti yeah. or, you know. I just watched uh, Cartel Land like two days ago. Oh, have yeah. you ever seen that one? No. I mean, it's good. Cartel it's Land? Good. It's a good it's parallel Netflix, story it? about uh, one guy that is a border patrol and he's trying to do it as peacefully as possible. Is it a it's like indie movie? It's like a, you know, it's, it's a guy, it's a filmmaker. I forget who sponsored it though. Okay. It's like some big house. Like and it won awards, yeah. Oh, okay. For like best documentary. I actually, Cartel Land. I might have tuned in like late, interesting. late night and not remembered it, but that sounds, at least I've scrolled past it. Honestly, my dream would be to do just stuff like that. Like to, go over with Vice News, you know, oh. where they get in the middle of the action kind of stuff. I, mean, I know it's easy to say that, but I've been in some tight spots already. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Kenya was not <laughs> Yeah, not that was, very that was pleasant. Um, yeah. So what would it take to work for Vice? I mean, surely Vice has some sort of Kansas City headquarters, you know? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you should start that shit. I don't think, it's, I don't think I'm ready yet, you know, in terms of skill level. Mm-hmm. I, want, I want to get there, though. I think... I, love I think er- anything I do, like I'm just going to India. I don't know what I might make, mm-hmm. but I know I'll get some good shots that I can use for a reel. Right. And that's what I've been doing really is collecting for a reel. Right. Who, who can say they've been to India for their part of their reel? You yes, know? exactly. And uh, location scouting is always a fun thing. Mm. So. And, and you wanted to talk about that as far as location oh, scouting. Oh, yeah. Yes. So remember, so to give, to give you all a little bit of background. Fire. <laughs> That we still need funding for that project. Me, mm-hmm. me, and Colton had this idea for a uh, like a short film, mm-hmm. and it was a good idea. And we <laughs> needed a we kind of based it all around finding this lost cave. Oh yeah, in the right. middle of Missouri, and right. we're not giving specifics because it's ours. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so I, pro- I do this all the time. I go through old records. I have access to old record databases, city plans, stuff like that from way back in the day. And then I love going to universities and checking out their records and stuff like that. Right, so I right. pieced together this theory off of a blog post from 2005, <laughs> and then no evidence supports that it existed after that point. It I can confirm this. Yes. And then we printed out these photos. I had a general idea of where it was. And then me and Colton go out there, and we say, I'm like, hey. That's the rail from the photo. And you're like, oh, my gosh. Matches the photo from the blog. So we hiked two miles, probably. Yeah, I'd say so. And then... In uh, the wrong direction. And, yeah, well, it was the wrong direction at first. And then we went... We backtracked. Yeah, we backtracked. And then you're like, hey, there's something over the hill. I'm like, yeah. let's go check it out. And then you you were the first one, popped your head over the hill. <laughs> and you're like, oh, Colin. Oh, Colin. It was you incredible. Get, you got to see it. I'm like, what? Is it a dead body? <laughs> <laughs> and inside was a limestone a mine, basically. Massive. With Pillars the size of SUVs, oh, all spaced out. It looked like Moria from Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, easily. And so th- that's the kind of thing I like to do is I like to find old, lost, forgotten, abandoned places mm-hmm. that no one else is willing to like do the research on. You're like Indiana Jones, man. Yeah. Well, like Tomb Raider. I recently stumbled upon a find. So at one time, I was doing a lot. Kansas City just installed its own streetcar. Runs from the north really? of the North River Market all the way down to the South Crossroads That's District. That's cool. It's about two miles. It runs two miles. And what I so I started digging into streetcar research, like from back in the day, historical mm. ones. And I'm like, well, there was one that ran east to west. Huh. Yeah. And then it, there was also one that ran north to south. But they built buildings on top of it, and the tunnels are still there, according to, like, this old news report. So it could be, like, some sort of subway type system? Yes. Like, it, there's actual tunnels, like, still underneath KC. And there's very few entrances. And so I will not share where the entrance is, but I found the entrance. To, w- uh, to one of these sorts To of one of these tunnels. Did you go in? No, wait. I, no, not Too yet. scared? Well, first off, it's trespassing. Okay. Second, allegedly, did you go in? <laughs> second, I was just really kind of a scout, but I know I found it because uh, 
there's no other place that that tunnel could go but down because it's like not next to any sewer lines it's yeah. not next to, so there's only one way it can go and it is down and under like what would be down there an entire tunnel system from under like 8th street to 12th i actually 8th street to 12th street dude is well yeah cuz there was one that went all the way to westport which is south of the crossroads and mm. that's like Four or five miles, but they cemented like that up. Early 1900s or something. Or yeah, this is like when the far, city but. was built. Like, okay. Yeah, and they shut it down because uh, the hill was too steep, oh, and it was stressing out the cables. And so oh, they eventually wow. closed it when you know cars came around and there was right. no need for streetcars anymore. Right. And then we built one again. <laughs> <laughs> All these years later. And yeah, and so I I know I found it. I know I found the tunnel. So what are you gonna do with it? <laughs> just, I, don't, I don't know but that's the kind of thing i like to do it's like i'll i'll run and jog and i'll scout out these places and try yeah. to find it and uh, a lot of times you run across homeless people but i mean actually they're pretty nice like <laughs> some of them are t- going man? some of them are kind of tweaking but overall they're really nice people who right. just want to be talked to and treat well, like what, a what's being. that drive that you have <laughs> to find you know i like secret things i like finding things that no one else is willing to put the time in and find I, it's like a it's like a test of how uh versatile and resilient you are when you can't find something right so if i reach a dead end that's just an excuse to go back and find a new way right and i think the better i think it's always important to be a good researcher when you're a filmmaker because mm. uh you know sometimes you have to read about organizations and why like uh like usaid for stoa I had to read about them. Mm. I read, so I read their entire like uh, process of how they go into a country, and I found a lot of flaws. Well, wow. I'm not talking about that. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I f- found this underground tunnel system, and all that's between me and it is a giant padlock <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of trespassing. I'm talking laws. like this is probably gonna take more than just bolt cutters. How do do, the, do you have to have permits in Kansas City to film? Have they got that far? Uh, I don't think so. That's I, good. Hopefully that doesn't really yeah, take I mean, effect. I know we just had a uh, grant, the first state grant for nice. Kansas City and for filmmakers. Really? Tax incentive, yeah. Just opened up this like, last year. Really? Yeah. So what's the, do you know the details on that? Mm-mm. I Let's know. Uh, is it Kansas City or is it Missouri? It's filmkc.com, I okay. think. Or kcfilm.com, one or the other. <laughs> um, and they lobbied uh, film office in Kansas. Lobbied the, the state company. legislator, and they got a tax incentive for filmmakers. Oh, that's big. Yeah, that's big. That's how so, it all happened. That's yeah. How so American Ninja Warrior came out, took advantage of that. American um, Ninja Warrior. They signed on a uh, KC film. That's not, badass. I don't remember the name of the movie they signed on, but it's gonna be interesting. Wow, this is cool. Yeah. Why shoot in KC? Yeah, they have a whole video. They have a location directory. They have a production. Uh, uh, production when crew guide with my name's in there, my number's in there. Nice. Yeah. So, what are you in there as a uh, cinematographer? Yeah. Nice. Uh, oh, this is cool. This is exactly what the Midwest needs. Something like yeah, this. It's like a weird interview. Especially from the, <laughs> yeah, very long and. Uh, Why shoot? Why you shoot in Kansas for, City? For a video, that's not very... It's just interviews. There's no... It's film two places. interviews. That's no. probably not the best way to show off your marketing, but okay. Hey, call us. Red Iron Films and Infinite Productions. We'll fix you a Kansas City film. <laughs> I, that's, you know, that's one reason that, you know, you especially have kind of turned me on to Kansas City is mm-hmm. that it's a... It's not a young metropolis, but it is, <laughs> it is a... It's like... It's not fully formed. And so I feel like my influence and other people, other mm-hmm. artists, like have an influence on it rather than like L.A. is just so developed. They have their system. They yeah. have. It's hard to break. It's into. super hard to break. And in. they're just taking advantage of people that are young and hungry. And exactly. Have talent. You know, most of the time they just chew them up and everything. But yeah. this is like. Actual, and I get that. I do. Like, yeah. But right. When you have an industry that big and that powerful, I mean, that's just mm-hmm. that's just how it works. I, I really think that today in this day and age, if you want to get noticed, you get just you have to put your work out there and show mm-hmm. it. I know this one guy tells a story in uh, on the music bed. He tells a story about how he, oh you just shared it the other day. Yeah, he did like a, um, yeah, a test. He was doing a test of a camera, and he posts it online, and he got a call uh, to come and join a music video team like nice. that day. Wow! Like they saw it and they're like, "We gotta call this guy." Whoa! Yeah, that was a, that was a long that was like 2011. Kind yeah, of 
and <laughs> a long time now ago. there's always footage out there <laughs> right and I, I still think that like if you put your stuff out there and you find your niche mm -hmm. and you know what you're good at don't play to your weaknesses play to your strengths mm -hmm. you're good to go and you'll find your dream kind of thing absolutely and i i totally agree with that and i'll add um to anyone out there that's you know wanting to do something like this music production film production you know anything scientific research um, don't be afraid to fail if you think that your um, video isn't that good or the website you built isn't perfect. It's not. Mm -hmm. But post it anyway. Put it out there because what you're doing is, is you're setting your bar and you can surpass that bar. So if you put out a mediocre website, yeah, it's going to be mediocre. We were talking about this before. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be mediocre. It's your first one. It's your first video. Exactly. It's your first you know photography shoot. But put it out there because one of two things are going to happen. One, people are going to notice, mm -hmm. and they're going to notice that, oh, that's what Colin's doing. That's what he's into. And two, they're probably, they might give you pointers, mm -hmm. or they might refer you, you know, but they're not going to know what you do unless you put it out there. Exactly. And we have the internet, which is hasn't been around for, what, 25 years or whatnot, mm -hmm. and that is the one sole game changer, especially in the world of media and, and art and creation. Exactly. That is how you get out there. I mean, that... this. The internet is what changed Crossland from, you know, the mega construction corporation into what it's doing right now, which exactly. is branching out. What are you, five thousand people on Facebook and mm -hmm. you're recruiting, you know, people from all across the nation because of the social media presence. Yeah, I bet I met my social goals four months early this year. That's amazing. Yeah, and that's just knowing how to play to your strengths mm -hmm. and your strategy and your creative process and. Uh, following orders really I, yeah. I think i could have got right. there in six but <laughs> you gotta you also have to you know willing to be willing to, to fail and then go in with a growth mindset you know yeah. don't don't get discouraged you know you put something out and this is as good as i'll ever be well if you think that way you probably will but you have to go in with a growth mindset you know i, I am, will I get am better. my worst uh critic yeah, but absolutely. Every yeah. time, every time I make a video, they're like, "Wow, Colin, this is really good." I'm like, "It is total crap." Yeah, <laughs> you're just cringing at every scene. I hate it, but I have a due date. That's because of how much you've sp time you've spent. Yeah, with and, it, you and you like for some people, it can never be done. It you're can right. never, and that's why I put Stowe to the side. And I had those interviews that I haven't touched. I'm like, sometimes mm -hmm. something has to be done. You can come back to it, save it. Obviously, sure. Future proofing is so much easier these days, like with old footage. Right. But you can come back to it, and maybe you'll have something new right like a new a new outlook or a new story that added on to that story i think saving your content and then thinking about the long term and not really knowing i can't tell you how many times like i've saved footage or saved things that i really could have just deleted and yeah. then it comes back right like Freaking especially in a corporation they come back and they're like hey do you still have that thing? i'm like i do I, in <laughs> fact i do why well, thank you good it's sir. on my third terabyte hard drive that's on the fourth exactly. rung of my computer <laughs> <laughs> and uh so yeah i mean definitely find your creative outlet fail forward yeah. and uh don't be afraid to be who you are kind of thing you know uh, don't change your uh, your style just because it's what the people want. Mm -hmm. Have your own style, and sometimes I have to do that for um, you know I have a sole employer really, yeah, and they require me to appeal to different audiences, mm -hmm. and you have to do that sometimes. But um, don't lose who you are in that, like, because that can get addicting. Like, oh, I got more views because yeah. I pandered to the audience. Yep, yep, I'm not in it for views, and if anybody's seen my website or my Vimeo. I ain't pan I'm not pandering to views. Right, like, right. I don't care. You're doing what you want to do. Exactly. The more I fill that up, uh, the more it speaks to me, mm -hmm. like in terms of success for myself. Right. I think and ultimately, if you follow that sort of path, yes, you get more of a, uh, a, a truer sense of success. Yeah. Because if you do find true success, then it's not like I I sold out. You know. I, exactly. I, I'm, everyone loves my music videos, but I hate them. You know. No, you, you followed the path that you wanted to follow, and maybe it took a little longer for uh, your flower to bloom, but it finally did, and, you know, you didn't sell out. You didn't, you didn't sell your soul. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've always had... I actually have a question. Oh, shit. This is my show. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Turn it around. That's uh, mine. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so interested in biology and chemistry mm -hmm. and uh, organic science but you're so good at film. Mm -hmm. why, why leave that behind? Why not? You know, I was thinking about this the other day. 
<clears throat> trying to figure out, because this is something that I, I have been trying to figure out since the moment that I switched my major to mm-hmm. biology. Like, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it all st- st- stretches back towards when I came back from, and from L.A. the second time with my girlfriend, now wife, Kelsey. Uh, I was just so emotionally crushed, so mentally distorted, because the way that I had planned my life out and the way that, you know, the trajectory that I had mm-hmm. since... Maybe I was, I think I was 10 years old in the back of my mom's truck. We were driving to school or maybe church on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, having the thought like, okay, I'm going to go to California. I'm going to make Jurassic Park with Steven Spielberg. You know, I had this sort of, (laughs) I did, I did. I had this thought of like, that's what I'm going to do. So throughout the entire upbringing, throughout middle school, high school, all that sort of stuff, every decision that I had made to that point was based on me getting to California and doing what I was going to do, you know? I didn't date this girl because, you know, who knows what will happen. Maybe I'll fall in love and get stuck here. Nope. I wasn't going out and drinking and partying, you know, because yeah. I don't want to ruin my brain cells to, you know, I want to go to California. Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when I came back, I was completely just like, what am I going to do? And, you know, I, I, I couldn't find any worth in what I was doing. I felt very worthless on set as, as a PA sometimes because that's what you are. You're just kind of like a throwaway. You're a production assistant. You know, yeah. not, not every, you know, the Netflix thing was awesome. I did Chef's Table. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They treated me awesome. They, they taught me a lot of things. But there was just some productions that, man, they just they didn't care about you at mm-hmm. all. So that really weighed on me. Uh, being one of a billion people trying to do the same thing, that really yeah. like grinded me down. So I just came back broken. And that just seemed like something worthy of studying, it was something that I was interested in, but I guess it kind of gave me a break yeah. from the life that I had been pursuing this whole time. And, I, you know, that's just kind of what I've thought to myself driving back and forth to Pittsburgh. <laughs> because I, I don't really know why I'm doing this. You know, it's, it's embarrassing. Sometimes you don't know why you're doing it's something. It's embarrassing to admit it. Like, why am I studying um, biology and chemistry? And I don't get it. I'm getting my ass kicked by organic chemistry right now. Oh, yeah, you know, but at the same time... I have however many thousands of dollars in that office over there, and I'm like, I want to be using it. And that, you know, my calling is videography. That's whatever sort of production. Yeah, that, and you're that's good just, at it, which I was uh, just thank like, you. why? Thank <laughs> you. Dude, I can't answer. I cannot give you a straight answer, but I want to. I Like, you know, I also thought about if maybe if I did everything else before I, have, before I do the one thing that I know I have to do, mm-hmm. it's kind of like if I, if I take care of school, no matter what degree it is, that's not an option anymore. It's yeah. like, well, I can always go back to school. <laughs> you know, it's going to come down to the to the to the choice of, well, I know what I have to do. I have to build this video production company. That's my choice. Like, yeah. so I don't know. Maybe it's rendering out every sort of choice besides the one choice that I know I have to make. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, okay, definitely. Thank you. No doctor. one, no one takes, a, no one has to take like a direct path. And yeah, often direct paths don't work. Like, mm-hmm. I definitely believe there's some valleys you got to go down in, and then there's some side roads you're gonna have to go around. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I don't, I never thought I'd be here today. Yeah. doing this. I thought I'd be in finance. Like, I yeah, thought I'd be right. like trading on Wall Street and stuff. Yeah, and that's what I was trained for, but that's not what happened. Yeah, and school, you know, school's only what four years if you're. If you do it the right way, no, I did it the wrong way. I got out. I got out in four. <laughs> right, you get out in four. <laughs> that was or whatever. a mistake. I cannot tell you the surprise when they're like, "Oh, you're gonna graduate this year." I'm like, "What? <laughs> Why? That's three years so from you now." Have all your credits. I'm like, "Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a double minor?" <laughs> got out in four. I mean, I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, if you do that, then then it's over. It's in the past. You have your paper. And I, I quote you often because there was one time, it was the first semester I was back, I was going through Gen Chem 1, beating my ass. And you go, let me see if I can remember correctly how you said this. Colton, you, Colton, you, you do college the way that it's supposed to do rather than the way that you need to do it. Yeah, you, uh, college is a series of expectations mm-hmm. and hoops to jump, to jump through. Mm-hmm. So you, the test is to jump through those hoops, to right. learn as fast as possible. Right. And then take that exam. It's not to retain that knowledge right. and learn Which in a is course. Sad. Yeah. It's to jump through the hoops. And if you jump through the hoops, you join an elite group of people that mm-hmm. have a degree. Mm-hmm. And they've also jumped through those same loops. Right. And they hated it too. Yes. But they want to know that you're able to jump through those hoops. And being able to learn it fast, as fast as you can, mm-hmm. like teach yourself something overnight when you have to, that's an invaluable skill. And they want people to have that. Right. Because that happens sometimes. <laughs> and it's almost like a screening process too. You know, there's mm-hmm. so many people, there's what, 300 million I noticed you talk a lot people. about college on your uh, podcast. 
Right, yes. yes. Well, probably every I'm band I've listened to. Yeah. I'm in college right now. That's I want to finish this shit up <laughs> <laughs> so I can do this full time. If you took calligraphy, you just make a fake degree. Calligraphy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when you spend half your time thinking about how could I hack into Canvas and change my grade, you know? I'm, I, I should remember, just be studying. I remember applying to a bunch of different places like Wall Street Firms, the government, and then uh, Crossland. Nobody asked for a copy of my degree. Mm-hmm. I did. I mean, I didn't update anything, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, "Did I even have to do this?" Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think about that? I don't know. I, I I always ask. I'm like, "Do you ever background check people?" Like, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Yeah, but it doesn't really show like college and stuff." And I'm like, "Great, <laughs> glad Wait. I went through that." Yeah, four years of <laughs> distress. And maybe whatnot. they do. Maybe they don't. Maybe. You know, I I used to be super anti college. I kind I'm like fifty percent now, like mm-hmm. anti college. If you're gonna be a doctor please go to college. So, mm-hmm. you know, anything in the sciences, yeah, probably go to college unless you're like some genius. <laughs> but, you know, as far as like, and I may be totally wrong on this part, but as far as like English courses, um, as far as maybe like music and whatnot, I don't know if you need to go to like a college college. Maybe you could um, build a community, you know, like teach yourself on YouTube or even get like a local, I don't know, get like a local guitar group together and you could literally play guitar by yourself. I mean, I mean, I don't know. You could teach yourself anything. I didn't go to school for videography at all. I didn't take a single class that had anything to do. And then one day I just had to do it. But because I went to college and learned how to learn something Mm. so fast, it's basically like an instinct now. Like Mm -hmm. I can learn things when I need to immediately. And that alone is what got me to this point, yeah. is learning new things, trying new things, experimenting, right. knowing how to experiment. It's, and you should know that from science. Like, Absolutely. Experimenting is key in video. <laughs> oh, yeah. And just being, yeah, being willing to throw paint against the wall and, and, and not committing to it, yep. you know? Cut a video this way. How's it feel? Not doesn't feel right. Delete the whole thing. Yep, it's gone. Yeah, do not get connected to that. I've sort deleted of stuff. probably more videos than I have yeah. actually produced. That's <laughs> but that's a really really good point that you bring up to being able to experiment without being connected to your experiment. Exactly. Because that's how you're going to grow. People, you know, I, and I used to be one of them who would put together something and they'd be like, "Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I love it." <laughs> you know, but I should have destroyed it and done it again because when you make that, and I'll just convert this to videography but when you make that first pass on your video Mm -hmm. you know think of how much you've learned think of how much you've spent time with the the clips and the music and all that stuff delete it all and do it again and i mean how many i mean that's kind of where you know did you do it 25 times in a row i don't know you got you got to make that decision as the editor. But it, you know. ten thousand hours makes you an expert at anything. Yeah, is that the, yeah. the goal? That's so, something like that. Yeah, I looked. Ten on, years. I looked on my red camera. I've filmed like over two hundred hours worth of footage Jeez. on my camera. I'm that's like, a, that's a lot. Like yeah. two hundred hours. Two hundred hours. That's a lot. <sighs> that's that's, a, that's interviews though and stuff like that. Yeah, that's and, still though, I mean. Uh, 200 hours divided by 24, yeah, whatever that would be, 20 I'm not plus. Do, I'm not doing math right now. Um, almost a month of shooting. I'm off work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. So, I mean, col- I mean college is, is, is what it is. It's an archaic system that's left over from the 40s or whatnot. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. But I, America in general needs a total overhaul of their education. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Systems. Yeah. School should be like magnificent palaces and like, you know, like amazing buildings yeah. and it should be a safe place where like people and they can right go and learn kids like i'm talking like junior highs mm-hmm. high schools and like i love building schools with crossland mm-hmm. it's so cool to, like i don't think they've ever missed an opening day mm. like when it comes to building a school right and we stand by that promise and so therefore you get to see these awesome buildings and like kids so excited and that's how it should be yeah and but i just think something gets lost with the the whole education system. And yeah. that's really the thing you need to fix in this country if you want to turn it around. But oh, that's definitely one point. For the right? long run, that is. That's definitely one point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've always thought that as well. Um, you, you take the architectural stance on it, but as far as, like, the, the teachers, uh, you, you know, we, what do we pay them, 20 grand a year to teach these kids? I always think those those should be, like, the most prestigious spots. Like, wait a minute, you're a teacher? Holy shit. Like, let me shake your hand. Yeah. Instead of, you know, we kind of just, not us, but, you know, you just kind of just laugh or whatever like oh you boy, how how's that paycheck you yeah know? exactly and, and we kind of mock it you yeah know? and uh, that's not good i mean no. we need as many good teachers out there as possible right and on I, every level you uh, know? yeah kindergarten college, all the way college through. to kindergarten mm-hmm. like 
kids and we need to teach them like real life skills, not yeah. like yeah. like I don't know. I'm sure. Well, part of it has. I was going to mock trigonometry, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> trigonometry is uh, important in construction. Some with you. <laughs> <laughs> good, good point. But, good point. Like we need to teach them like taxes and like mm-hmm. how to do taxes, how to balance their checkbooks, right. how to like this is like real world stuff. Sure. But we don't teach them that. Yeah, it, and I would even add on to that, like maybe um, conflict, how to deal with conflict, maybe yeah, life inter- skills, interpersonal managerial skills. skills. Yeah, absolutely, how to express yourself. College in. did teach me that yeah. in that regard. Business school was but great. It, I learned a lot. I bet you did. Yeah, you're and a sharp, you're a sharp young boy. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. Sometimes <laughs> I'm, I am what I need to be. At I, I have time. a little quote thing in my in my phone, and there's a quote by you that says, "Colton, you're surprisingly good at life." <laughs> <laughs> And you said it. No way. I promise, dude. <laughs> yeah, I remember like looking over at you like, I gotta put this in my phone real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, you're surprisingly good at life. I was like, what does that mean? Thank I don't you, know. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Clearly drunk. And <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah, into interpersonal skills. And then what I was gonna say also is at some point you have to be truthful and honest with yourself mm-hmm. and look at a child and say he's not going to be a nuclear physicist. Yeah. And not in a mean way, but just let's not waste time with, uh, unless unless he's going to be dedicated and he goes, that's what I want to be. Then fine, Jimmy, you can be a nuclear, nuclear scientist, whatever. But, you know, kind of call a spade a spade and yeah. say, you know what? We let's should probably real. teach Jimmy how to do taxes. And if you do that, they might just use that energy. Yeah. And do it anyway and then become amazing at it. Have you ever seen the, the, the science behind telling a kid, not telling a kid that they're smart? Yes. And telling the kid, what was it, like that they did a good job, I guess, or I can't remember what you're supposed to tell mm-hmm. the, the kid, but, but not to say, wow, you are so smart. Because it gets in their mind that it's not a growth mindset at that point. Yes. It's a fixed mind. Oh, I'm smart, so you're fixed. Like, yeah, now yeah, you now are I'm smart. Now I'm not going to progress anymore. No, not, I not exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that in that same way is, you know, just telling a kid, like, if you work hard, you can learn this. I think that's why I don't accept praise or, like, uh, applause or any mm-hmm. of that. Like, I don't want any of that. Like, right. <laughs> so, because I think that slows you down. Like, I can still hear that applause from the Because it premiere. feels good. It does feel good. However, you can't let it get to you. Yeah. And uh, like when people are like, that's really good, Colin, like mm-hmm. in your video. And I'm always just like, that is total crap. Mm-hmm. And I hate myself. And as soon as this gets posted, I'm deleting it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get it out of your head. You know, this, I know. when you, st- I'm, I mean, I'm guilty of it where I'm on the computer, I'm clicking away, throwing s- clips around. And then I kind of get in my head that, how many likes is this going to get? Is this, I wonder what people are going to comment on this video. You got to kick that idea out of your head yeah, so fast. Never get complacent. No, Com- no, no. Complacency is the death of like innovation. Yes, and then if you're like you said earlier, you're trying to um, pan to a certain audience. Like, oh, if I if I edit mm-hmm. it this way, you know, I'll get more likes. No, you got to be. In- you got to be f- stick with the integrity. Be exactly. integral in your editing and your storytelling. It's hard or, today. It is. It's really hard. Um, what was it? I was watching the other day. It made me think. I don't know. Anywho. Stranger Things, you've watched Stranger Things. <laughs> oh, also, I think it's so- <laughs> <laughs> speaking of which, I also think it's important to uh, know your right path, like mm. to know your path. So sometimes, um, Crossland will come and they will uh, make me focus on something other than video, mm-hmm. and that's okay to a point. But when I'm not getting better at video, I tend to like rebel mm-hmm. <laughs> and so yeah. but i also think it's healthy to rebel against people that are trying to keep you away from your path it's up to you to really kind of draw that line mm-hmm. and sure you could take orders and just be a mindless drone mm-hmm. but i mean you could also stay after hours and work on your videos right and uh and as well as your other stuff so i think it's very important for people that want to do better to rebel in mm-hmm. some ways for <laughs> This is, can be dangerous. You don't know where Here's to draw the line. Listen to this carefully, ladies this and gentlemen. Is, this is not for everybody. He's not saying... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying jump up on the table and flip off your boss. Yeah. That's right. not a good idea. Maybe some of you should, but... Sometimes there is an alternate route. Think of mm-hmm. every, I think of my whole life as a chess game. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think of my whole life as seven different chess games going on at the same time. <laughs> Accurate. But sometimes you need to pawn... Or sometimes you need to move a pawn, mm-hmm. and then sometimes you need to bring your queen out, mm-hmm. and it gets real serious. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just depends on how much you want to win, I guess. Mm. And that's well, kind what of would your um, advice be on, like maybe that someone didn't quite know their path, maybe that they have certain interests and they have 
um, certain clues to like callings to their life, but they're not, maybe they're not brave enough to accept it, or maybe they just don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what I want to do. I think that, I think for me, I knew that video was what I was supposed to do mm-hmm. based on that feeling and that ability I had from the get go um, to do it. It was very technical. Video today is very technical, and mm-hmm. it didn't used to be like that. It used to be, you know, cut, cut, snip, and yeah. that was rough. <laughs> and yeah. Now it's now it's all computer based, and I was always good with computers. And like I, I like when I was six years old, I ripped apart our PC and put it back together again. <laughs> Call I, 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 like a little weirdo, old Jimmy and Neutron. People from my family would invite me over when I was ten years old to install things on their computer. They didn't <laughs> you know and me both. I was ten years old. I know. And they like they're like, yeah, can we have Colin come stay the night for the weekend? I mean, this is dead we'll serious. Him. This is like people in Columbus, like, like we'll feed him. He can stay the night. And I just like installed stuff on their computers, oh and they would God. feed me like coffee and snacks and stuff while <laughs> I did it. And so I always had a really good skill with computers. Mm-hmm. But when I first made that time lapse video, I felt something mm. special, like. I was able to bend reality and like go above what people thought was possible. Like, especially when people were like, we do, we don't need videos. Hmm. We don't need videos. As far I'm as like, like a business. I'm, I'm like, like, like you need videos. Yeah. <laughs> you need I know something exactly out what you're there. talking about. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you need something out there. Yeah. And so when I started to do it, I just, I felt like the world was at my fingertips. Hmm. Like whenever you feel like, when I'm in that edit room, I feel like the whole world is in my hands. Like I control it. Like that's, it's me versus the machine. It's not, it's, it's a fluid process. It feels mm-hmm. like magic. Mm. I think it's that magic feeling like that you are manipulating time, space, and uh, the world around you mm-hmm. to show, to show a certain creative edge or image, like in wow. a message. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's just from a creative, but I think when you feel that magic feeling, that's how you know you have something like uh, I have this cousin who works for Carlson in construction. He does carpentry, but he also makes furniture. Hmm. And when he's in his shop, he just feels like the world is at his fingertips. And he's making these awesome tables hmm. and uh, dressers. And he's very talented. He's an ex-Marine. And nice. he's just amazing at it. And he wants to put more time into it, obviously, and build up a business. But, you know, he has, he has a kid to feed, too, mm-hmm. and a wife. Right. And I think, but if you're willing to take the jump and really go after something, you should do it, especially if it feels like magic. Like, chase that. Mm -hmm. Chase that feeling. And, you know, if something's not working out for you, don't be afraid to switch your game up and do something different. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think that's the best advice. What would you do? I'm mesmerized by everything (laughs) you were saying. (laughs) I was, like, at a TED Talk. Like. (laughs) I, I seriously do believe that it's that magic feeling like you are mastering mm-hmm. um, your craft. And like every day when I'm in that studio, I feel like I'm mastering my craft. Mm-hmm. I'm getting stronger. Uh, I'm getting smarter. And it doesn't feel like work to me. Like I don't, I don't mind that I work all night mm-hmm. by myself. Right. I think it makes me a little crazy. Maybe. But it's fine. Yeah. You know, it just makes, it makes make better it. videos if I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you wake up and you have a machete in your hand. And that's fine. <laughs> you know, you're like, you just put it down. And you're like, whoa, that was a weird. Wow. <laughs> Why is there a tent in my office? Oh, no. It's like I killed a deer. It's in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <laughs> <laughs> Randy! What was that in Beer Fest where he like wakes up and he's got blood all over his mouth? And he's like oh, got yeah, a right. dead deer next to him. He's just like, oh no, not me. again. I thought that was no, no, it's, no it's uh Deuce it's Bigelow. Fest. No, is, is it Deuce Bigelow? No, it's um no, nope, it's Beer Fest. The animal. It, well, there's well, oh yeah, the animal with another the, one. Rob Schneider, where he goes, <laughs> where he goes. At. I love that movie. Yeah, I, I I like I like that sort of uh, advice. I um, think it's I think it's sound. I mean, mm-hmm. I would. I'm well, you put it always, into practice. So. Yeah, well, I wanted to master. Like, I, I don't think I'm there yet, obviously. Mm-hmm. I, I've got a ways to go. Oh, so humble, Confucius. <laughs> I've got a ways to go. Student for life. I'll get there one day. That's good. <laughs> one day. Um, so do you think you're going to focus more on, you know, like you're a very good colorist. Do you think you'll do, do more love co- color yeah. change, grading? Yeah. You're really, really talented at that. Do you think you'll focus on that? Or you, will you kind of, you know, this is the day and age where... You, you know, you can write, direct, edit everything yourself. 
you think you will specialize or just kind of? I kind of have a plan, like a plan of what I want to do. Let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> it's not a secret plan or anything. Oh, okay. Right now, I'm just trying to collect as many beautiful images and movements with camera as possible. So I've signed up to do this untitled uh, KC public access show. And I've been going to different breweries and distilleries oh, so cool. uh, to film. And drink. And Well, yeah, actually. At one of them, they just kept serving us beer. I'm like, this is not good. This is not good this, for me. Do you know how much this <laughs> camera cost? I was doing really well, though. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm in my element. And action. And action. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, that's been really cool. And, I mean, the images I get from that are professional lighting mm-hmm. and stuff. And nice. we're filming it like it should be. And it's a crew of me and two other guys. Nice. And this guy really has an image for it. And he knows what he wants to do. And he's the EP. And it's great. Because I don't have to do the legwork, which is always kind of, like, it's really hard to do everything yourself. Absolutely. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah. But I do it. It's, it's rough. <laughs> and uh, I think if I collect as many beautiful images as possible... And then, you know, I can make a grading reel, an aerial reel, mm-hmm. um, a reel just all together with me. And then I think maybe that'll bring in business for different things. I'd love to get into just color grading. Yeah. That would be fantastic for me. I love I love it. Though. You're really good at it. You started with the Da Vinci Resolve, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, I'm, still, I'm still on the mature. But you got your, your balls now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call them? You need to clarify sorry, that. Sorry. <laughs> when I got it up, I was like, yeah! <laughs> uh, the color wheels. Yes. And, uh, and does that. that really help out? You know, is that like essential? Uh, it, makes it, it makes it a lot faster. Like, like you with just a mouse, it takes forever because you got to yeah. go through all this different settings mm-hmm. and menus and stuff. And the shortcuts don't always do it. Um, but really having those wheels and knobs and buttons, mm-hmm. they're mapped out. You can map them yourself. And I did. I mapped them all myself. And they go real fast. Nice. Like, now I get through with color grade. And that was really hanging me up. Like, it would take me a month to color grade all of our crossing footage for the year. Yeah. And then I could only get it. Right. So now I just color grade in a week or less. I did. I think I've wow. done all the crossing footage already. And it took me three days. So when you do it, I mean, are you doing one clip at a time or are you like doing batches? You, st- you start out one clip at a time. If you're shooting kind of in the same general location, mm-hmm. you can uh, kind of pander it. You can copy over your previous mm-hmm. grade and then adjust mm-hmm. accordingly. Okay. And that's great because like there's a copy button. It's yeah. like copy, apply. Yeah, saves like, a lot of time. One, two, and you're done. Yeah. Yeah, and that's so much faster. And yeah, <laughs> I'd like to do only grading, but I don't think I'm quite there yet to where mm-hmm. I can compete with other people. And But I mm-hmm. want to get there. And in the meantime, I just do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. It's definitely like a niche, niche that like people don't really jump towards immediately. It's yeah, it can everybody be wants to be an actor. And plus, it takes a lot of processing power in a computer to handle it. Yeah, in real time. As well, especially with like a 4K or a 6K yeah. type project. Yeah, and it's a lot of data. You mm-hmm. have to be moving a lot of data. Not only data, can't, not can't really only do processing that on power. <laughs> no, no. But your your screen too. Your screen has to be mm-hmm. up to resolution, so you're actually looking at what it's going to look like. Yep, what I've, its true form. I've is. built as close to a color studio as I can in my nice. office. Uh, just recently bolted a 4K television in the wall, and it's it's been easier. However, I don't know how I would be able to do it without the gear I have. Right. Like, like if I was a run and gun freelancer, like. Which some people they can edit on their laptops, mm-hmm. and they don't need a workstation. That's I admire those people. Like I, <laughs> I used to do, do that too. Do. I just can't do it anymore. Right, you've exceeded that. I don't know if I've exceeded. <laughs> <laughs> you've you've uh, when you're not as that. mobile, you kind of feel like you're failing. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I like to be, uh, I like to be gone from the office two weeks at a time, constantly yeah. on the road. I'll right. sleep in my car. I don't care. Yeah, I can't do that anymore. I need to run the whole show still. Huh? From phone tablet. Because you just feel freer. Because you're out exactly. there in the field. Exactly, like you're out there. You're not afraid. It's like, oh, I'm just going to hop over to this site, take a quick four-hour mm-hmm. nap. When I wake up, it'll be sun up. Yeah. Get that shot, film there, move to the next one. And I just do that for a, a week or two. And bouncing from relatives' houses and stuff to shower. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> Crossland, luckily, they're big enough. They have enough offices where I can go and uh, chill. Right. And regroup. and Say hello. Yeah. Download they're, anything you need to. They're pretty good about that. So this uh, this uh, brewery type thing, what's mm. what's that all about? Uh, it is a right now. It's just this guy who wants to make a uh, public access television show, and mm-hmm. it's an exotic car and brewery tour of everything in KC. So nice. I've been to two breweries, 
we're doing the cars either this week or next week. And then it's like product shots from the breweries and stuff. Right, right. And this guy is lined up Lamborghinis, Aston Ooh. Martins, uh, Ferraris. Just people Corvettes. that own these cars in yeah, Kansas City? Yeah, there's like or? a club in oh, KC okay. of people that own exotic cars. Because why not? <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, so um, I get to shoot all these amazing things that I wouldn't normally be able to shoot. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you can just go, hey, can I rent your Lamborghini for a second? That's <laughs> not how it works. And so these people are giving it up freely for exposure, nice. and I get to film it, and then I keep all the images for myself and my reel. Nice. So this is at, it's That'd all be very kind of, helpful. It's a long play. And I, that's an important thing, I think, is playing the long game. Mm-hmm. Like, you're playing the long game right now. Very long. <laughs> <laughs> Very long. It's not that long. <laughs> it feels like it in relativity. Yeah, that's I, a good move. I think it's worked out for you. I mean, you picked up a wife and uh, <laughs> an awesome house. Thank you. And good living, so that's cool. Yeah, that, that, part, that part's taken care of. I love coming here. Yeah, it's nice and cozy. I like the three acres that we're on. I mean, mm-hmm. our neighbors are a little tweaked out but whatever that's cool <laughs> probably from your parties <laughs> <laughs> they're not invited but they always come i was gonna say the last time i saw you i think i assaulted you with a uh, inappropriate toy at your party <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> i thought we were gonna talk about it. really because i think i have the snapchat we went <laughs> you probably do i thought we went over the things we cannot talk about on this podcast all right fine we won't talk about it <laughs> giant purple dildo was at this party <laughs> and somehow you said, it, you said it not me somehow it ended up on my face whatever i knew it was gonna happen I don't know, man, but uh, I know that it's hard for people because they have dreams of what they want to do, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been lucky enough and to live mine, mm-hmm. and it's it's great, but it's because I've just been surrounded by great people and stuff like that, and they believe in me, and they're willing to risk money on me, mm-hmm. and that is pretty rare, <laughs> and uh, so far I haven't let them down <laughs> yet. Uh, my numbers go up every year. You're good. So. You're be good. You have the mindset, you know, you have the, the spirit of um, no fear of failure. You know, you'll eat, you'll eat failure if you have to. I think it's just I'm not afraid to get an ass chewing. <laughs> that too. <laughs> that is, that's a big thing. That dude. is a great skill at life. If you go to college, learn that skill. Be able to take an ass chewing. Right. And I can take one for three to nine hours. <laughs> just lay it on me now. You're a lazy gentleman. Colin Crossland loves and ass chewing for three to nine it's hours. It's good. Bosses can yell at you for three <laughs> hours straight, four hours straight. and. Well, I mean, when you're ranked 80 in the country of the construction, biggest construction companies in the United States, I mean... You're getting. A, they gotta give an ass chewing every once in a while. I got yelled at for uh, flying drones illegally. It was illegal. Uh, it was illegal for a little bit, right? It was for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. you need you a pilot's eat. license, mm-hmm. and so I got yelled at for that for a little while. And uh, I was like, "Well, how was I supposed to know about the law and stuff like that?" I'm like, "I'm not a lawyer." Oh, I knew about the law. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we also needed the footage. And like, you can't fly anymore. I'm like, "Okay." I'll go and try and get my pilot's license. And you did. You took a couple classes. I did until I got to the medical exam. Oh, really? In the medical exam, they're like, uh, they're like, it says here you take ADHD medication, and I'm like, "Uh, yeah, I do. Is that a problem? They're like, yeah, you can't, you can't get a pilot's license. What? Like a sports pilot license, uh, if you're on ADHD medication. And I was just like, well, what are my alternatives? What do I need to do? And I, I thought they were going to be like, well, you could apply and have a doctor re-examine you right. kind of thing. And they're like, oh, you have to go off it for 30 days. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Doc, that's not going to happen. Don't they You're give out that of your shit. mind. <laughs> they give that to fighter pilots, right? I'm like, I'd lose my job in two weeks if I wasn't on ADHD oh, yeah. medication. With uh, your schedule, with your sort exactly. of workload. Yeah, and it is really difficult to focus huh. uh, on one thing for me. You? Yeah, yeah right? right. I mean, I, people can't tell from this podcast after work that <laughs> my mind shoots everywhere. <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous, man. But, yeah. So and then they said, so they said I couldn't fly drones. I was like, okay, so I'll go and do that. And I did for 10 lessons. And then they were like, hey, we need you to fly drones at these three different sites. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, no. so we're, under, we're, we're aware that what we're doing is probably not cool. And they're like, nah, you're just a hobbyist. Go out there and do it for fun. I'm nice. Like, okay. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Just <laughs> got it. You just classify it. You just organize it a little differently. I would only do it off company time. Hmm. So I was just a hobbyist. But that's not the case anymore. That, that sort of thing just went out the door. No, the uh, FAA, actually, to their credit, 
has ruled out very uh, lighter restrictions. All you yeah. have to do is go to a airport and take a little written test. Hmm. And then once you pass, you can fly a drone for a business. Hobbyists can fly it any time they mm-hmm. want, which is bull crap. You have to register it. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and are you telling me a 12-year-old can fly a bigger drone than I can and have zero training? Mm-hmm. But if I fly for business and I've been trained into doing it for years, even before there was laws, mm-hmm. I, it's illegal? I'm like, and you well, have that re- doesn't make sense. <laughs> you have a reel that you can show, like, look how smooth I fly. Look how, look, <laughs> I've chased motocross people, you know? Exactly. No one died. Oh, I can't Oh, you, is it brand new? You haven't, even, brand got, you haven't new. even got to it. I'm, I've been on the road. I've been to Texas, oh, okay. Las Vegas. And yeah, you've been going around the country a little bit lately. I've been traveling so much. So you went, to, nice. you went to Texas for a football game? Well, it was Part of it was. Part of it was <laughs> the football game, but I went down there for work. I got rained out two days, mm. so I couldn't go to job sites. So I edited, edited footage in our Oklahoma safe house. Uh, I called them safe houses. Nice. <laughs> and... Uh, and then I went down to Texas to film, and I got to film a little bit there, and uh, then I came back. Nice. And, so, and then before that, I was in Vegas for a family trip, mm-hmm. which was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoyed the stories earlier. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a long trip. And that was cool. And then before that, I was on the road to Wichita, Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been all over. And these are all uh, uh, footage. You're yeah, shooting. this is all film. Mm-hmm. And then I filmed that motocross thing. And yeah, I've just been That's dope, on dude. the go. That's dope. You're going to cut a new reel? Uh, hopefully. I got to finish thing probably by the end of the year. Yeah. I guess you have that Christmas party that's yeah. barreling down like a five, asteroid. Five long videos. <laughs> that's amazing. You know, dude. honestly, I've been doing it for so long. I have a formula, like how to nice. do it. I know how to organize it and get it done fast. Yeah, you so. definitely are very good at working and playing. <laughs> very, very impressed about well, that. Crossland's motto is work hard, play hard. Yep, that's true. It's on t-shirts. You, you, it's, it's provable. I think it's in your <laughs> DNA. The yeah. amount of th- the content that you would push out, and then I'd check my Snapchat, and I'm like, he's at the fucking lake. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? He was just in his studio. How do you do that? I don't know. I need some of that ADH medicine. <laughs> um, it's not the medicine. It's just who I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I've known you long enough that, yeah, I right? totally concur with that. But... It's just your personality, the interests that you I th- take. Having fun is you have to relax your mind. Mm-hmm. You have to step away and be able to just reboot. Mm-hmm. Because if you're always invested in something, like I watch my friends stress out, stress out about their presentations mm-hmm. and their uh, the current projects they have and marketing fields. And I'm like, dude, I don't know why you're stressing. Like, mm-hmm. Just take a step back mm-hmm. and then come back. And every time they do, they always come so much more refreshed. Mm-hmm. That's exactly, you know, Randy and I were talking about this yesterday as far as like the difference between a software company and maybe like a financial institution to where a software company, you know, is saying, hey, we have nap pods, we have ping pong, Mm -hmm. we have, uh, you can go shoot paintball guns, you know, like all while you're on the clock. No Mm -hmm. worries. Hey, we got yoga classes. We have, um, you're interested in pottery? Yep. We got one over there. Mm -hmm. And how much innovation and creativity and productivity come out of the software companies versus like a financial institute, no offense to a financial, but just my example yeah. to where they cram you in a, in a cubicle and yeah, you poke away and you have to wear your, you have to wear your suit and tie and mm-hmm. it's nine to five, just the different type of mindset and the different type of quality of life that those two produce. And that's what you're saying right now is, well, I have a lot of friends on wall street mm-hmm. and they, Oh. <laughs> yeah, they all kind of, all their bosses are trying to get them addicted to the lifestyle of mm. selling and progressing, mm-hmm. and they they need them to be money hungry. They have in-house psychiatrists wow. to get them focused back on their accounts and willing to dump off the old stuff that they know is not going to make money. So mm. they make them as unemotionally attached as possible, mm-hmm. and then they pay them like an exorbitant amount. Right to live that lifestyle hmm. and it keeps them hungry having that much money and then being based off commission and being addicted to those millions and getting more and more and more. Right, right. And I think that's very different than uh, like a software company where like they need you to be smart. Mm-hmm. Like not, and they don't need you to make major decisions immediately. They need right. you to be thinking about the long term and what the customer needs. And then also being able to meet certain standards, like mm-hmm. design standards. And right. you, you have to be willing to do things that you think are impossible. Like yeah, St- if you you've read Steve yep. Jobs' biography, right? Mm-hmm. It's right there, mm-hmm. and that is probably the most amazing book because Steve Jobs pushed people 
past what they thought was possible. But they call it the reality distortion the field. The reality distortion field, where he could bring you in and make you think you could take the world on. Yeah. Hey, I want this project done in a week. And then and usually it would take a month. And they go, such, what? How? He, he and they did it. He had such high standards that he would just destroy people yeah. if they were in his way. Like, if they didn't like a certain thing or they settled on something. Yeah, he had such a charismatic thing about him mm-hmm. that people were like, when they got chewed out, Hate they were almost love. inspired. Yeah, Hate or love. so strange. Hate. Very strange character. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's, I think it's very different lifestyles. Like, because uh, I was trained to go on Wall Street. Mm-hmm. But then my uh, mentor also taught me how to market and how mm-hmm. to like invest in my skills and think about the long term. Got my mind really strategic about what I need to do. Mm-hmm. And I think so that's why I have seven chessboards going in my yeah, head at all times. Right. And sometimes a checkerboard. <laughs> it's one over here and there's seven chessboards. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and I'm doing them all. <laughs> move. Clock. Move. Clock. Bam. Exactly. You don't want to take my queen, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you can yell at Number across. five. <laughs> don't touch that. <laughs> Yeah, you have a good heart, man. I mean, you're just like a, a good, solid person, so I can never see you like buying, wow. buying the that. Wall Street lie. Yeah. Well, I would lie or whatever I actually, lifestyle, I guess. I knew, I knew that Wall Street wasn't going to work out for me when uh, I was going to school for being on Wall Street mm-hmm. around 2011 when the uh, Republicans were debating in the House on whether or not to raise the debt ceiling, mm-hmm. which is a way for the government to pay back the money we owe other people. Mm-hmm. And just the debate was driving stock so far down and watching everyone panic around me in our little simulation. You want to do that? They had like a $4 million portfolio that they made. And I would always hang out with them. I wasn't in the program, but right. I walked and I loved working with them and just helping. And so watching them all freak out is like the market downturns because of one little argument in Congress that could destroy the credit rating right. for the entire country. Which did, just right? Because a bunch of crazy Republicans got into office. And... I say that as what I consider to be, I am a Republican, but mm-hmm. Republicans today don't consider me a Republican. They call me a rhino. Republican in name only. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, ridiculous. Never heard of that. It's bullshit. Just because you got crazy doesn't mean that I have to be a rhino. Well, de- <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely the, the political parties have splintered, you know? Like, yeah. They've gone off Wall to Street's the far a big part left, of that. far yeah. right. Yeah. The yeah. Cra- Just talking the crash. It causes that- people to go kind of crazy and like panic Mm -hmm. and so when that happened i realized that that wasn't supposed to be for me Mm. and then i was also supposed to be recruited into a uh government organization (laughs) yes no government organization i took i took all the personality tests and Hmm. uh they it said that i was i was not ruthless enough basically Wow. I wasn't a ruthless enough person, which i think i am actually (laughs) Uh, (laughs) like i'll do what i need to do to get the job done right um, but yeah, and I wasn't willing to, they were like, well, we just, we still want to accept you into the program. And I'm like, no, if that's what you're measuring for, I'm right. like, no part of it. You're not. Well, you scored high on smiling, but your mm-hmm. ruthlessness is not. Exactly. What'd you say? <laughs> Ruthless? Ruthlessness? I forgot that on the part of the test. Yeah. Well, they didn't say that in that. Would you waterboard words. punch in the stomach? I would waterboard. <laughs> <laughs> you have waterboard. I have a waterboard. I, but it was just a test. Where is she? I'm like, can't be that bad. Martha! <laughs> Why'd you say that name? Why'd you say that name? Ah, <laughs> that movie. Oh, let's talk about it real quick. What was your take? Why? That part? Well, I don't really know how I feel about Batman versus Superman. First off, mm-hmm. we're comparing it immediately to the Avengers. Mm. It's not fair. Mm-hmm. When you compare movie franchises and different projects, you need to like step away. Mm-hmm. I think just because we have such a high standard and so Avengers many movies. just killed. Yeah, oh, it's murdering. Marvel, I guess Marvel just killed. I watched Captain America Civil War like three times like last week. <laughs> it's, it's just killed. They've just totally destroyed the whole game. Making they've just making billions. Oh my god. That's awesome. They Good rewrote the whole thing. Save Star Wars, mm-hmm. brought that back from the dead. I mean god. they're just destroying the entertainment industry. Right. So how is DC supposed to compare with that? I you know, I just I don't know. I think I, I don't think they have a good enough guidance with Warner Brothers mm. and stuff. Like uh No one? Well, no, no, I'm not talking the actual make filmmakers. You're talking the like, Dark Knight's fantastic. Talking the Overlords. I'm talking like this new generation, yeah. like Man of Steel. Yeah. From then on, um, not the actual filmmakers or the project makers, but like the puppet masters. I'm talking about the studio heads. Yeah. Yep. They, they don't gotcha. have enough long term ability to see down the road, and this is, goes back to being strategic. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they don't have clarity enough to see where the fan base is going and what they find important to the audience. Like. Right. 
Batman and Superman are close to everyone's heart. We have an expectation for mm-hmm. it, these characters because right. everybody grew up with them and we can all relate. And so we all have different things we want. We want the movie to be funny, right. also badass, right. obviously, right. but also stay true to what we grew up with. Right. So hitting on those three is very difficult, and especially when you're making sequels. Mm-hmm. I think Iron Man 2 learned that real fast. Like, oh, yeah. Iron Man 2 sucked. I hated it. Well, Iron Man 3 sucked. I like 3. He had a gun. He had, like, a pistol. He was going around the oil tanker. It was like, where's his suit? Oh, yeah, that was weird. Oh, yeah. when he didn't have his suit. Yeah, he kind of got, like, separated from his yeah, suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Ugh, come on. But, I mean, that was part of him realizing that he is Iron Man and not yeah. the suit. Yeah. I mean, he is a superhero because of who he is. The it's important for that, character the development. Effect, <laughs> I, I agree. The effects <laughs> in that movie were freaking incredible. Oh, yeah. When the oil tanker br- blew up. Damn, yeah. Dude, that, I was sitting in the theater just like, what? How in the world? It looks so good. The effects, I, I just, it blows my mind. Did I've you, tried to do. I've tried to do oh effects man, on it's green a, screens. It's a different game, dude. It's going to be difficult. Um, have you seen the uh, trailer for that Russian movie with the CGI? Mm-mm. It's like it's a meme, or it's like it's a trailer that was shared on Facebook, and I saw, it and it says uh, when Russians figure out how to do CGI, and it's this Russian superhero movie. Dude, I'm gonna pull it up. <laughs> it is crazy. No it's, way. It's a uh, just another example of the democratization of, of digital filmmaking. Oh yeah. So, so instead of like America running their game, yeah. Ooh, uh, you know, American cinema is extremely, extremely, and, and we're like, we set the. Bar. Absolutely. And now we're pandering to China because China's one of our biggest audiences. China's like, oh, oh, they love it. That's why there's so many Transformers movies. Transformers, Marvel kills over there, oh, our yeah. Godzilla movie, which they made a Godzilla movie. Yeah, I saw that. It looked good. It looked pretty crazy. Russian um, CGI. Let's see if I can even find it. But there, it, it's like a Marvel thing. It's like superhero. Here it is. It's <laughs> called Guardians. Minute 18. <laughs> I'm in Russia. Oh, this is intense. So it's kind of like a, um, a superhero movie. See, we Ooh. got the guy who's floating things. That's cool. But you can kind of tell it's not as sharp as as an American film. Like, but it looks good. It does look good. Different. It different. Different style. You know feel. it's... Yeah. Ooh. It's like they're Avengers. It is. It That's is like awesome. It's like an X-Men type feel based out of Russia. It's got like a Russian theme to it. Wow. The bad guy is now going to be America. What? <laughs> I don't know. No way. It would be hilarious if it was. That would be great. I mean, we've been doing that to, to them, them for years. years. <laughs> I mean, Rocky. I, I can't imagine like what Russia thinks when we send over like Die Hard where he's oh, like, murdering Russians. Right. And they're like, well, this is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like my uncle Bob. I don't think that's nice. Here, this one of these guys turns into a bear. I want you to see this bear. There he is. Oh, man. Oh, he does. Oh, it's got like a bear body. It's man bear pig. That's what, that's what it looked like. It it's, looks, it looks like Le- a, that's Leo DiCaprio's sequel to The Revenant. <laughs> it's Leo's son. <laughs> exactly. He got raped by the bear. Exactly. Remember when they said that? Yeah. I, that, that was crazy. I love it though. I love that. Like, I mean, cause video is, mm-hmm. video is the future. It's going to be 80% of our internet intake in like 2018. Oh, I believe it. It's crazy. I mean, that's all I do. much online video shooting up and i told i told my bosses this like three i'm like hey we need you on video because mm. that's the future mm-hmm. like we need to I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah visual you, you do that you, visual you, you just take care of it and i have been i have, a <laughs> I have. Huge okay i'll take care of archive <laughs> what, do, what do you think about like virtual reality and whatnot you know, oh, you, know, you, yeah, you, you had purchased um google you talk Glass. a lot about virtual reality and it's a, stuff. i like you it. love it it's cool it's amazing you're the first person that showed it to me like mm-hmm. an oculus if you're mm-hmm. the first person you put one on it and it stressed me out like yeah, it spins <laughs> your brain a little bit i think it's gonna be good i think it'll be one day the future of cinema probably like when we have kids mm-hmm. like uh when they're probably like i don't know i'll probably have a kid in like 10 years bro. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it right here ladies and gentlemen yeah and 10 years uh I think you'll be taking your kids to the movies, Mm -hmm. but with a VR headset Mm -hmm. and uh, some kind of, you know, like holographic. But it'll be interesting to see how the movie industry adapts. They're already trying to adapt, Mm -hmm. trying new things. You know, GoPro sends out those VR videos all the time. Right. Just pan around. How cool is that when it's on your phone and you're just kind of looking around the room? The first video I ever saw like that, I was actually trying to prove a point to my mom about the uh, the Ferguson protests. Mm. She thought it was ridiculous. She's yeah. like, oh, it can't be that bad. And then I, sh- I pulled up an app on my phone and showed her the actual protests 
inside with VR and oh, she wow. could look around on my phone. Right. I was like, mom, people don't do this for no reason. Right. Not this many people do that. For, I mean, just look and be there and listen right. to what they're saying. And you could like hear people giving their speeches wow. and chanting and what they believe in their conversations of walking by the camera. It's, it was kind of eye opening for mm-hmm. her. It made her very, she's like, Oh wow. Very immersive. You know, yeah, you're, you're almost mean, there. It's one thing to see it on the news, but when right. you're there and you're being empathetic to what is happening mm-hmm. around you, like you're there, that's, that causes more impact. Yeah, absolutely. I think on an audience. I used to think that VR would take over film. Like, you know, mm-hmm. theaters would get we kicked out. We used to think that about 3D. Yeah. I don't think so anymore because it takes so much energy to interact. You know, I, I have an Oculus Rift, and I, yeah. I, when I mess with it, there's a substantial amount of energy that I have to dedicate towards the experience rather than, hey, time to watch Mr. Robot. You know, <laughs> you kick back, and it's like, it's telling me the story. I don't have to think too much. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm laying on the couch. I just want to relax and have a good time. So there's like it's it's just like another branch off of the video media. You know, yeah. maybe someday I can lay back and matrix it out. But, <laughs> you know, until that day. I think I think the tech isn't quite there yet to where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. I think it's getting there. Um, within ten years, I think <laughs> that we will have totally changed the entertain, entertainment industry. Oh man, ten years? Can you imagine? I mean, think about. 10 years in Kansas City. Like, what can, what's Kansas City going to look like in 10 years? Well, I mean, in ten, 10 years ago, from what mm-hmm. cinema is today, it's kind of the same. Say 2006. Flat screen, there's 3D movies now. Mm-hmm. That's the only difference. Mm-hmm. It's kind of been the same. But I, a lot of industries were like that before they had the huge jump, before mm-hmm. we had internet on our mm-hmm. phones, right. before uh, you could talk to people face-to-face. Like, it's things... Things take a huge leap, and obviously we're in a bubble right now, but eventually, like, you know. What the, we don't have to worry about that popping. What bubble? We're in a tech bubble right now. The, um, what do they call it? Not the Matthews Law, the uh, Moore's Law? hmm Is that what you're talking about? Well, I'm, I'm talking strictly from a market perspective. Uh, like, we had the internet bubble, mm-hmm. you know, with uh, dot-com companies, Yahoo, um, Microsoft. And then w- when you get out of a bubble, you reach a certain point, and then it kind of dips down. Like mm-hmm. it starts going down. Like uh, software companies aren't what they used to be, but mm. now because it's more of the products side, consumer, like right. cons- consumables, like devices. Yeah. It's not so much about the companies that are making mm. uh, software anymore. Right, right. Because now we have an app for everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> and so that's what you mean when everybody when can make a website. A... So it's right. not like you're investing in one website anymore right if you have a website it doesn't necessarily you know s- focus on you anymore exactly because everyone could it have just one. got so big that the bubble burst and now it's a whole different game it's a tech mm. game mm-hmm. data, data mm. game. oh everyone loves data i love data data is amazing <laughs> people just sell data like that's what companies some companies do they're just like yeah we'll sell what's the uh company uh not williams there's a company Oh, Caleb would know. He's in marketing, but <laughs> where's Caleb? <laughs> it's a, a company that registers like who watches what, what age do they watch? Nielsen, oh, Nielsen, Nielsen company. Nielsen. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, just think about that. That company, all they do is sell data. Yeah. They collect data and they go here. You want to know who watches your TV show? Here you go. Yep. Analytics. I mean, just selling analytics back mm-hmm. to people, which is very valuable. Mm-hmm. I mean. Um, Knowing where to cater your audience to and think, what products. That's so key. Think about all the data that's generated from a social network. You know. What are people clicking on? What are people sharing? What are people talking about? That's what's so great about Twitter. You know, Twitter is my like my social go to. Oh yeah, and the hashtag uh, thing where if something like say the, the riots in St. Louis are going on, you mm-hmm. can type in St. Louis and you're going to see every single tweet that has a hashtag of St. Louis or has that mentioned in it. You know, you can see what the whole world's thinking about mm-hmm. this. If you ever do it for a movie, I mean, it'll ruin your movie for you because <laughs> everyone's got a, a, a opinion on it. But it's just amazing to be able to kind of tap into the collective consciousness of what's going on in the world through something like Twitter. You know, I know not everyone's on Twitter, but yeah. the vast, a, a big majority Huge is. community. Yeah, exactly. Community. Um, I remember it was, a May, it was a night in May in 2011. Mm. And I was on Twitter. Uh-huh. I was supposed to be studying. <laughs> Wasn't studying. I was on Twitter. And I saw a little hashtag like, God bless America. Yeah. Uh, God bless the troops. And I was like, what's going on? Because it, it kept popping up. It got oh, really okay. trending. Right. I'm like, right. it's like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Like, what's going on? 
Osama bin Laden had been shot. Whoa! I found out through Twitter. It through wasn't Twitter. A, it wasn't a it wasn't a news mm-hmm. thing. And I shot out of that library, t- and I was just like, "Everyone, get up!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like everyone because we had fi- we was during finals, and I was like banging on the doors. I'm like, "Everyone, get up! We're going to the bar." <laughs> That was such a strange thing. People, wait, we partied hard. Oh, dude, we did. Is that a good or bad thing? That we celebrated, like, a, I mean, I, I obviously it's not good to celebrate someone dying. Yeah. But I feel like that was a chapter in America that needed to be closed. Right. Like we needed to close that chapter. Yeah. And we've been hunting, we were hunting terrorists for 10 years. Right. And seeing nothing. And then all those people you know, the victims of 9-11 right. and those affected by it. Right. Like, it needed to be close. We needed to have justice done and say what you want about a trial or whatever, but sometimes a bullet is a trial. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, th- yeah, I totally agree. And that's a particular to situation, yeah. And I think, I think we did it very respectably. Or for, I mean, we could have just dropped the bomb <laughs> or we could have just, uh, you know, made a public spectacle of it. Right. But we did it in silence kept it under the radar, got our intel, got out of there, Mm -hmm. and then gave the proper burial rights Mm -hmm. to our enemies, which Mm -hmm. I think that's an honorable thing to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably one of the most honorable missions uh, in American history Mm -hmm. is we went in, got the job done, and we got out. Sure, we broke sovereign airspace. (laughs) Absolutely. That was probably not cool. We're the biggest dicks of the world, man. We run this game. I mean, we can do that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's things that go with that, but it was definitely a chapter that we need. It's like closure, right? you know? It was the, it, this this culprit got away yeah. for all the it did so much damage and mm-hmm. it just kind of just vanished yeah and it's always in the back of your mind every nine eleven that comes around it's like oh shit remember that so yeah I, I agree I have, I have so much respect for those guys over there and what mm-hmm. they do uh, I have no respect for politicians <laughs> <laughs> yeah right um, and I just I think they're amazing what they do over mm-hmm. there and they really make a huge sacrifice and putting their lives in danger. Mm-hmm. And one day I hope to be over there filming with them. So That would be cool. It would be so great. What are the documentaries that you've been watching lately? Like, what are the ones that you mm-hmm. would, if, if someone were to make it this far into this podcast, you'd say, I want to watch some documentaries. What is Colin Cross on viewing what these days? What am I watching? I'm always watching something. I love Vice. Yeah. Vice is probably the most real, Talk about real Vice. voice. I've brought up Vice f- every podcast episode. Nobody knows Nobody what it is. Nobody knows what Vice They're is. They're like, I've never seen it. Vice is so important today because it is um, people that are willing to put themselves in harm's way to bring you the story. And that's rough mm-hmm. because we wouldn't know how deep ISIS was in their, uh, their dogma and their uh, indoctrination. It had Vice's... Uh, reporters not gone over there and been face to face with like head people in ISIS. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that was back when they wanted media like crazy. And, uh, we went over and we gave it to them. But, and vice is like a, a, it's a YouTube channel. It's like a, it's like a, it's a whole network, internet conglomerate news network. They have a series on HBO. Mm-hmm. They have a, a channel mm-hmm. now, uh, that you can get with the cable, uh, subscription oh, in wow. some places. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, they have online articles, uh, different websites, newspapers, multiple YouTube channels, fun stuff, munch, munchies. That's yeah, a great show. The munchies. They have the tech, the technology one. I forget what it's called. Yep. Love that one. Yep. They have like the science motherboard. One. Motherboard is yep. what I love. Motherboard. It's so good. Yeah, they have like different YouTube channels that organize their shows. So yes. like what you're talking about, the international ones. Those are more mm-hmm. uh, w- uh, political, mm-hmm. international war, yeah. that kind of stuff. But then there's also like motherboard. There's also fun ones like, did you watch the one, one with um, Iceman? Yeah. Oh, where um, his name just left my head. <laughs> Hoffman. Hoffman? Uh, no, his name Iceman. Wheat Hoffman. <laughs> Wim Hof. Wim Hof is his name. That was not a 20 minute nap. Wow. Oh, Kels. <laughs> We've been going for two hours. <laughs> How was that power nap? Right before <laughs> Colin and I started, my wife said she's going to take a 20 minute power nap. And it's been <laughs> I was like, too okay. Long. <laughs> No, but uh, Wim Hof is his name. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of Wim Hof? Uh-uh, uh-uh. He's, uh, I want to say he's a Swedish guy, but he's, he can submerge himself in negative degree water mm-hmm. for hours and control his body temperature. If you ever want to see the, the failure of like the war on drugs or crime, oh, or uh, hear the real stories mm-hmm. that hit 
uh, across like. I remember they went over there during the Ebola scare, mm. and they went over there. Yeah, I like, watched in that the one. middle of yeah, it. And you can see that, that guy was nervous, but mm-hmm. I mean, kudos to him for being there mm. and the cameraman. Like, I cannot imagine Ebola melts your organs. Fuck that. Yeah, I remember. I was that. That was around the time I was going to Africa. Oh wow! And people annoyed the crap out of me mm. about it because I wasn't going anywhere near Ebola. Right. They're like, oh, you're so brave. I'm like, it's a continent away. It's yeah. like literally from California right. to North Carolina, how yeah. far away I'm going to be from right. it. Right, right. It's mm. not dangerous. Uh, it's just we hype up panic so much in this country mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we don't just like be real and kind of see a situation for what it is. And then we, we just we see it, and we panic, and then we do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> just, we go on to the next panic. I hate that. It's crazy. But back to Vice, yeah, if you listeners out there tune in device at least the youtube channel they're because, very smart people oh they're amazing they're telling it how it is mm-hmm. even when they don't like very truthful they very, they I definitely like, have their own views but mm-hmm. they tell both sides and then they sometimes do. stories don't have two sides sometimes mm-hmm. they're three or four they, right. sh- they tell those two right and that's awesome yeah they're unhindered by you know giant political head figures like you know fox news or mm. cnn you know they have all these people they got to scratch their backs and make sure that everyone's happy mm. vice doesn't seem to have they don't that need to do that no they're totally free in what mm-hmm. the, in the stories that they tell yeah absolutely and uh i think it's very important to have that kind of journalism absolutely. i follow the absolutely i followed these guys uh for their coverage in haiti mm-hmm. and they did such a good job over there and mm-hmm. they told it how it was and I went over there and it was exactly how they said it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're they're basically mini documentaries, right? Mm-hmm. Like 10 minute, 20, 30 minute documentaries on a particular subject. I watched one about the Atlanta gun runners that oh, wow. go up to New York and they run automatic weapons from Atlanta, it's from Texas to Atlanta to wow. New York for the New York gangs up there. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's a big thing. And I mean, they make a profit off of that. Yeah. And that's just, that's just how America is, man. I mean, just think about that as far as all the tiny little itty-bitty you know, stories. When was this last time you saw Anderson Cooper do something badass like no, that? You wouldn't dude. sit down with these people and be no. real with them. No. But no, I mean, he's not going to cover a story like that. He's going to cover the Ebola scare, you know, something that's international, something that's, that every other news network is covering. Was know? it Dan Rather that was a famous newsman? He was, yeah. Yes. He went over to Afghanistan right. to show uh, the fight between the Russians uh-huh. and the Afghanistani people. Right. Like during uh, the time of the Cold War. Yeah, Cold okay, War. Okay, yeah. It was, it was in the 80s, I think. I can't remember the exact dates right now. But uh, he went over there. You never see anchors doing that anymore. No. You'll see Anderson Cooper in a town where a tornado just went through, right. just like Joplin. Right. But he doesn't go over and do international like affairs anymore. I, mm. I never see him, at least. Maybe it's just no. because it's an election year this year, but I don't it know. It could be. But, I mean, if he does news it, he's not lo- doing it often. News has lost its edge. And Vice still has it, and they're reinventing it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, news has lost its edge. And when people thought we should jettison it, you know, f- forget the news. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't be watching it anymore. No, I don't, I don't think that's right because the news is helpful. It is a great way to get the news, to mm-hmm. kind of figure out what's going on in the world. Because uh, unless you want to dedicate all your time to figuring out what's going on, the news is going to do it for you. You can tune in real quick. What's going on in the world? Great. Now I can go about my mm-hmm. day. And you're informed and you're ready to go. It's just that our news, as far as the... Uh, big power players, mm-hmm. MSNBC and mm-hmm. CNN and all the Fox News, they they became controlled little puppet masters that, hey, yes. let's spin this story how we want it to spin. Let's tell the people, let's show the people a, a jetliner that crashed in China, yes. the ocean, for four months like, when they're passing the, the, the international trade deal. What was that? The TCC or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's what it's called. But, but you know, they don't... an international don't, trade deal. Yeah, they don't the cover House. the stories that we want to hear. Yeah, it's not what the voters need no. to make an informed decision. If it bleeds, it leads. Exactly. So that's what they want to show. Yeah, they want to show of, you plane crashes, hype right. up weather scares. That's right. Ebola, it's, like you said yeah, earlier. Exactly. Hype up terrorist threats yes. to just make up, really, things that will make people watch. Yeah. Do you watch The Young Turks? The Young Turks is like an internet show. It's live. It's a live YouTube show. And really? it, it's based um, in the format of a news session, but they are closely related to Vice. Okay. Yeah, but they cover things like the riots in St. Louis. They cover the Syrian bombings. They cover things that you want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, like right now the big thing uh, that's on my mind is the pipeline, the Keystone Pipeline that's going through North Dakota, mm-hmm. and everyone's rally- rallying together. All the Indian tribes are getting together. Trying and to stop it. Trying to stop it. Yeah. You know, people are making documentaries. They're making music off of it. They're just trying to band together to, to veto it. I think I think all POTUS, 
said something about that the other day. Oh, he's the one that started it in the first place. Yeah, well, eh, I don't know what he said. He said we have to do something. I don't know what he did, but... I think, I mean, a lot of House Republicans voted that down. Like, really? Yeah. And I was just surprised. I'm like, we are supposed to be the financial business, financial savvy party, and we're making yeah. such a terrible decision. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I mean, it, it from would... an economic standpoint, mm-hmm. from a cultural and social economic standpoint, yeah, I totally understand. Like right. I said, there's more than one side to a story. Sometimes there's four, sometimes yeah. there's five. Well, there's consequences I too. I want to hear them all there's and then make the best to... informed decision. Absolutely. And there's consequences to each decision that's made. Yeah, don't build the Keystone Pipeline, but guess what? Gas is going to be $7 a gallon. Yep. Or, you know, there's always trade-offs, so we have to figure out what we're going to do. Yeah. Are you willing to pay the price? Exactly. Like kind of what price are you really willing to pay? Like, people don't want, like, uh, sweatshops yeah. to make our shoes and stuff. Yeah. But they do. Yeah. But sweatshops we, we also your phone. want our Nikes. We, so, you know. It's sad about the phone, you know, the you iPhone. You miss every shot you don't take. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are just serious questions that, you know, most people do not think about. Yeah. And... I'd like that Vice isn't afraid to like mm-hmm. tell us things we don't want to hear. Kind right. Of thing. Like they will and show you. They things hold up a mirror see. to America mm. and to the world, and they make you look at it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I gotta do. Do something. you hear that, Vice? That was a good little. <laughs> that was a good little log line for you guys. <laughs> we hold the mirror up to America. Yeah, they do. Just to the whole world. I mean, yeah, they're a fascinating, fascinating group. I don't remember how I found out about them, but I've enjoyed every series that I've watched on that YouTube channel. Yeah, it's, it's really, just so really enjoyed. Good. And I, I really want to work for them one day. Like, I would love to make their stuff. I'm not afraid to go over yeah. to, like, obviously, to, like, rough places. Dude, I totally think you could. You just need to, I think you just reach out, just see what think, they're about. I think I'll get there. I mean, Kansas City would be a perfect hub. You know, you said it's true. center of the country, you know? I mean, come on. True, I do love flying out of KC. <laughs> <laughs> no, build it in KC. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Say, hey, you got to, I think they're based out of LA, but hey, Kansas City just passed a film tax, you know, like the, the, the office space is way cheaper than downtown LA. Yep. Uh, why don't you set up a little sister company here, you know? Not a bad idea. I don't know. I'd be down. Vice I think, Midwest. I think really what I long for these days is people to collaborate with. Yeah. Like I love collaborating. Yeah. Like, like that's good. what me and you and Caleb used to do. I yeah. love that stuff. Is this not close enough to my face? <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it in post. I'll fix it in post. Okay. <laughs> no, it was, it's fine. Yeah, and collaboration also um, encourages you mm-hmm. to push yourself in different ways, or you find out different techniques through t- the people I you really work have. with. Just you know? working with these two guys for this public access show, mm-hmm. I've learned so much yes. from, from lighting to uh, different kinds of dolly shots. Right. Um, Just the way that they do things. You're this, like, I would never would have done it. This that one uh, guy is a freelancer. And uh, he showed me some things. I've showed him some things. Mm-hmm. And the EP, he used to be part of a marketing agency. And he, like, worked on really, really big accounts. Nice. And so I've learned a lot from both of them. And that's been great. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've been looking for for such a long time. And Good. Just, that kind of fell into my lap one day. <laughs> Tends to happen when you work hard. You right. Know, things just kind of come out of the, the mist. I swear things just find me. Like, <sighs> stories or... Uh, projects or mm-hmm. phone calls they just get through somehow yeah <laughs> it's which funny. i don't know why i'm not giving out my office line ever <laughs> it's 417 nope <laughs> <laughs> call on crossland 69 nope. at gmail.com oh, my cell phone is so closely guarded yes that number is so important <laughs> can you imagine that thing just blowing up retweet i need i'm gonna have to get two phones <laughs> what do you think about this iphone 7 uh, I love the camera on it. Oh, yeah. I love wireless earbuds. That's yeah? something that's been needed. Do you see the meme that said I already lost them? I wonder I about the chip these. inside of it, the processor, uh, the A10. Uh, not powerful enough? I mean, it's nothing's ever power no, powerful enough for me. I constantly, or constantly am calling IT and being like, hey, is there any way I could wire up like four more graphics cards? <laughs> They're like, well, you just, you just want a whole server rack? Like, is that what you yeah. want, Colin? I'll be yeah. like, two of them. I'm like, Colin, no. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> you asked. I didn't ask. That's a great <laughs> idea, guys. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, they indulge me sometimes. Sometimes not. <laughs> <laughs> they indulge you with a camera. I think they. I think everyone at Crossland has learned to tell the difference between my crazy ideas and then ones that might have fruit. <laughs> That's a difficult thing to do. Right now, I had this idea to have full-on 1080p streaming 24 hours a day, mm-hmm. 30 days a month service 
uh, for wire, for video uh-huh. uh, online. You know those Nest outdoor cameras that just yeah. came out? Yeah. Came out this month. Right. Water or waterproof, weatherproof. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You mount them outside. They run off Wi-Fi. Nice. Well, it's a great idea, but our Wi-Fi chips in the field don't handle that kind of traffic. Right. Yeah. Right. So, because it you could get like 380 gigabytes of data transfer in a month. Ouch. I'm like, okay. I'm like, how much do we have a month? They're like, five. I'm like, <laughs> that, um, five, hundred. Hundred. They're like, five. <laughs> I'm like, we're gonna have to do something about that. Jeez. So, those little things. But you're saying use those for um, viewing construction jobs? It's yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, use them like hours. little time lapse cameras, yeah, right. which we pay probably an, a service to do those for fourteen thousand dollars a job for the year. Wow. This would be down to like five hundred. <laughs> the price of the Five hundred dollars, and then from then on, like way cheaper. Right. Price of the camera. Price of the camera, upkeep. and then the service. Yeah, and then yeah. the editing stuff. And you can download it all. Would that be helpful to have a 24-hour camera just on the on the work site? Or well, a big thing is security, mm-hmm. and that'd be great mm-hmm. because there always there's always stuff being stolen off construction sites. Sure. No matter how many alarms you put in, so it'd be good to have that. Uh, two. People want to peek in on their sites. Like mm-hmm. owners want to, people at Crossland want to. They want to see their stuff uh, being done, being laid out, and the job moving. Mm-hmm. And then from a marketing perspective, people want to see something come from the ground and up real fast. Right. Like right. time lapses. Yeah. yeah. It's very important to them. It's very ple- It's very like, like, oh, pleasing. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. Oh, it is to watch a time lapse. Time especially. L- people love time lapses. Dude, people <laughs> love time lapses. It just feels good. Yeah. It's change, I guess. You know, most of life you don't feel the change, but if you could put your life into a time lapse. Exactly. You would be like, oh, yeah, I, I was, like you said, with the drone shots. Mm-hmm. If you could put a time lapse of you shooting drone shots for eight minutes at a time for a whole year. Oh, amazing. And then you're like, <laughs> I did grow. I did grow. Yeah. At the very end of all that, I did, I did gain skill. I did gain talent. And it, it's cool, though, too, because like every two weeks I was going to those sites, mm-hmm. uh, and even though they were far away, and I was filming. But when I put them all together from all those months of going out there, it looks really cool. Like nice. there's one shot, and then it, tr- it cross-dissolves into the next one a few t- weeks later, and yeah. then another, and then another. And it's just like you watch it being born like, oh, i wasn't wasting my time all from the air as you're going around yeah that kind of thing so it's a moving time lapse nice yeah and that's been really cool yeah but that's definitely an advanced be, technique my dream is to have a time lapse camera on every site mm. or a drone on every site that we have in the company and that is probably like a 10-year plan that would be really cool. Yes. Though. It'd be if cool just to go to a gallery of mm-hmm. uh, like uh, Nest cameras, like you said. Yes. Just like these are all over the country right yeah, now. Yeah, right now. Some of them are in dark because it's uh, in the West Coast or the East Coast, but yeah. some of them are on the West Coast bright and they're still working on it, you know. And then like, to have like a command center like inside Crossland that'd that be is cool. like seeing all the sites like yeah. live, like mm-hmm. with all the people. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Like the architect of the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I am the Site architect. 24. Welcome, up. Neo. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, shut your You mouth. are the sum of an equation that's evolved over time in the matrix. <laughs> an anomaly. An anomaly. <laughs> Vis-a-vis. Concordantly. Con- concordantly. Is, have you seen Will yes. Ferrell speak of oh, that? It's so good. great. Concordantly. Oh, she are did you, it just like she said it. Are were. you going to Joplin? <laughs> yeah. And you want to make sure that. He can cut this out. <laughs> I'm not going to cut this out. Cool. <laughs> you you want to say hi? Come on, Kels, come say hi. Come say hi. She's like, I do not want to do this. <laughs> Hello, world. <gasps> Hello, world. The world says hi back. <laughs> Every programmer out there is like, she said it. She said it. Hello, world. I don't know how you put up with him. <laughs> he is kind of adorable, though. So that does Thank help. you. <laughs> oh, God, stop. <laughs> A little in the video just the whole time. Kelsey, it was good to see you. Miss seeing you all the time. Casey's too far away from you guys, I swear. It's not that far. I'm back, right? You are, yeah, exactly. It's only a short, this road right here, actually it's over here. That road yeah, leads like to Casey. Close. Sorry, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> that road. That's, that's one. Fun. Yeah, exactly. Yes. See, she, she, she didn't know too. either. She's, She's like, eh, it's the wrong direction. <laughs> The sun is in the See, west. See, that's how I know I'll survive the zombie apocalypse. Because most people, they'll be like, "You're like, everyone head north. <laughs> I don't know where north <laughs> is. <Right. laughs> that's hilarious. Knife to the throat. <laughs> everyone that went south just got cooked. Later, dude. All right, bye. Good to see you. Love you.
No, think. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Where were we? I don't know. Dean switched to new topic. KC, World Traveler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Concordantly. Guys. Concordantly. Concordantly. Yes. That would be really cool. I like the idea. I like the access that um, people would have to the construction sites. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it would be cool. Also, virtual tours. I mean, anything like that going on? Mm -hmm. I mean. Well, I've thought about that using VR to, mm -hmm. like, virtual tour site. The problem is, is that it kind of requires a couple of programmers to, like, scan an entire site, do mm -hmm. the plans, BIM it up, and right. then make it into a virtual So Quite you're kind of getting into engineers there. Like. Mm. You're trying to get people to program for you and know how to work Autodesk, which is a huge thing in the construction industry. Really? Yeah. It's a Maya? huge program. Oh, yeah. Not Maya. Oh, okay. Uh, that's more architecture and uh, special effects. Stuff oh, like okay. that. This, we're right. just talking like Autodesk, AutoCAD. Okay. Like uh, design, AutoCAD design, stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. They all kind of run off that software to like envision a building, plan it out. They use it as a collaboration tool between civil engineers, mm -hmm. uh, general contractors, and architects. And they all kind of collaborate in one, wow. under one kind of software banner, which is really important. Yeah. Because it allows you to both see things coming, plan it out right, and then when, as you're going, plan out for problems you see ahead of time. Hmm. Right. And that is collaboration at its finest, just like how you make a movie. Mm -hmm. Someone does the audio, someone does the... Special effects, editing, and mm -hmm. then someone does the filming. Okay. That's the age. Well, yeah, that's the age that we're living in is that everything yeah. is getting so specialized that you just pick one and then collaborate with everyone else that's better than you. The world is getting really big. Yes. And it's and we all have to collaborate more and more mm -hmm. with the outside forces. Mm -hmm. That way, I mean, everything works out. <laughs> science is the same way. You know, I mean, you have your chemists, you have your biologists, yes. you have your micro, you have your field, you know, you have everything uh, working together. And yes. you just specialize. You say, well, I'm good at this, but not good at this. You, you can synthesize this sort of protein or chemical, um, but you don't want to go out in the field and get eaten by a tiger. So you send someone else on the Science field. is the fuel of innovation and in technology in this world. And the more you fuel science, the better. Like, uh, just as an example, precast, mm -hmm. which is a way of pouring concrete inside mm -hmm. uh, a factory and then shipping those walls or those modular buildings mm -hmm. or, out, or uh, unit buildings with mm -hmm. utilities in them out like a product. Wow. Yeah. So you ship them out to a site and then you install them and it takes the effort out of creating it on site. You create it in a controlled environment right. through the winter. That all came from science. Wow. Like that, that process was all experimented with and is mm -hmm. constantly being redone. One day, I think when you and I are gone, I think America's greatest export will be, uh, buildings, hmm. modular mm -hmm. floors, levels that can be installed off the boat. Like via um, 3D printing type things or? Kind of 3D printing. It's, it's more like uh, you take all the tech specs and then you just, like we pour concrete in a factory, mm -hmm. like just like we would, and then we break it out and then ship it like a product kind of on the back of a wow. flatbed. Right, just ready to go. Just yeah. a, one piece of a big piece one of day, a big puzzle. I think that uh, That'd be cool. America's greatest export to Africa, to impoverished lands will be buildings mm. actually ready to go yes prefab. level by level yeah like one <laughs> section of a half of a building on the 56th floor and then the other half yeah. on the 56th floor and then they install accordingly that's just a totally different world i have, it's I have a, no think idea of it as a shelf it's yeah putting books on a shelf kind of thing yeah <laughs> that are just ready to go pre-made just exactly add another another yeah that's amazing and then you install your uh like it's already wired for electricity and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. then you just put in your furniture and stuff like that. You move it on up and you're good. Like that's a building. And right. that we'll fast. be making buildings faster. Than, I mean, we already make them faster than I ever thought was possible. Freaking fast. I mean, it's insane. Insane. And like the actual m my, size. My employer runs at 110 pace. Like oh, absolutely. 110% all times. Well, you're ranked at going. 80. You got to do it. Yeah. And you we're get there. never stopping. Like it's just always going. Mm -hmm. Keep the machine moving, and we love it. Yeah, it's, I think that's. I think we're kind of addicted to it. But <laughs> you're good at what you do. So. Yeah, they and they are amazing. I think one day, like we will be, when again when you and I are gone, our yeah. children will be like shipping out like buildings and factories that's from ports crazy. across right. the ocean. It'll be it'll be insane. Have you seen those? supposedly like the 3d printers that can just build your house. Oh like, yeah. Like the one that's Those on the end ones. of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Did you see that one? It's on mm -hmm. the end of a bridge. It's already built mm -hmm. halfway and it's just building this bridge. I yeah. Mean, well, I mean, you think that'll have something to do with it? I think 3d printing to me is kind of like a double edged sword. Mm. I don't really 
because you can't 3D print a building and then it sustain the full on force of outside forces yet. The mm-hmm. material isn't there. Mm-hmm. And I, I think, again, that's a science will catch up kind of thing. But once it does and it's able to, we might have to create a new kind of uh, material. And we can. We can do that. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it'll be like vibranium or adamantium. <laughs> vibranium. <laughs> Unobtainium. <laughs> Unobtainium. Avatar. Exactly. It'll be a new, a new way to make durable uh, materials. We already do it with uh, concrete panels. Mm-hmm. We insulate them. We pour, pour a f- like a layer of styrofoam between mm-hmm. the concrete levels, pour it half up, smooth it, place the insulation down, mm-hmm. and then we pour another layer. And now wow. it's insulated from the inside of the wall. It's never going anywhere. Right. And you don't that have to is replace it protecting or from outside forces. Wow. And it's completely solid. And then they just stand these panels up like on site and then they put them into place and they mm-hmm. just stay there until you're ready to put the roof on. Like a giant warehouse? You could do that with a warehouse? Oh, we or do. Something? We. Crossland is probably one of the fastest uh, builders of warehouses in the nation. We Can, we put them up fast. That's like, amazing. Real fast. Can they build us a soundstage? <laughs> a soundstage? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get right on 100 that. 100 by 100. I'm struggling to hire Caleb right now. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a giant warehouse to run around in. Caleb will freak out if he ever gets to come and work on my team. Oh, dude. I would love to work He'd with him. He'd be a great addition. That he would be awesome. He's always good. thinking about marketing constantly, mm-hmm. constantly. And I've heard his podcast before and it's it's great yeah he's been on the podcast a couple times he's a fascinating guy his story is interesting too you know he was up and down and around Mm -hmm. had a prominent career as a baseball player and Mm -hmm. just kind of got cut short and you know took a little route a detour as far as you know thinking about doing this and trying something new and and it wasn't until recently he kind of really found uh, his calling, I don't even know if it's his calling, but he made it his calling. Yeah, he now did. it is. Yeah, so, he did. He made it yeah. his calling. <laughs> and he's amazing at what he does, and he's so dedicated. That's one thing that he has always been. It's just extremely dedicated. And he's always learning more. Yeah. He's always absorbing more. Yeah. You know, every time, like, even when we're, like, out, he wants to talk shop. And I'm, I'm yeah. always down to talk shop with Absolutely. people. Absolutely. doesn't. I don't care at all. He doesn't waste time. <laughs> no. But he knows how to have fun. He's, he's, and he's down to earth, man. He grew up in Southeast Kansas. You know, his mm-hmm. dad and his brother's a, a police officer. He still goes and hunts. You know, he's just he's just a good old boy. He has such a positive outlook on the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, he sees nothing but opportunity. No matter yeah, really does. No matter when things change, he always sees opportunity. And I admire that. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, ugh, I'm going to get phased out one day. Uh, yeah. He, I, I try to keep innovating as much as possible. But you have to. He's definitely someone to push you. <laughs> yeah, he's he's awesome. Always and and interesting. Like has interesting um interests. Like oh, I was reading Plato last night. Like what How the were you? <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah, he reads some weird things? Yeah, he's good. Super insightful. Super intelligent. So I'm, I'm always, always just reading going. old government records or something like that. Maps. Strange. Figure it out. I'm getting there. <laughs> like a goonie. <laughs> Oh, where's uh, what's the pirate's name? Oh, uh, Three Eyed Willie or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> You're gonna find him someday. That he's underneath the Kansas City. Specialty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chung. yeah, that's my biggest fear is like going mm-hmm. to those places alone. And, yeah, yeah, finding fucking Godzilla. Yeah, I, I never go unarmed anymore. And apparently, it's legal in Missouri. Yeah, I, I just saw that. I just saw that without time. a permit. No training. Without a permit. I'm like, yes. You know what? Who's going to do that? I was, doing, a, I was doing this anyways. Who's so. gonna, <laughs> <laughs> you know who's about to do that in a year? Who? Pitt. What? They're going to have on campus oh, yeah. concealed They're carry. They're really big about that. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm fucking glad I graduate in December. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Kids that don't have their prefrontal cortex fully formed, they can't even take a shot at the local bar, yet they can carry around on the Glock 9? No. America. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, They're going to change their major three times before the next prob- week's it's over. It's probably not going to end well. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she broke up with me. I don't know. I mean, there's no right. I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy. Like, I think it's good for. Missouri. I've been doing it this whole time. I have it yeah. in my bag. I think so. it's a responsible thing to have to carry a, a, mm-hmm. a, some sort of personal weapon on. Like you. at night in the office, I always yeah. have it next to me. I mean, I think you'd be, I think you'd be ignorant not to, <sighs> but to to allow like a place like Pittsburgh, you know, I mean, or mm-hmm. just underage children to do it, it just yeah, kind of freaks me out a little uh, bit. Schools are scary. Yeah, um, I don't know. 
It's 18 or older, right, Missouri? Like, you just, mm -hmm. it's just like everything else, you know? Pretty much. So, but, I, mean, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens and stuff. Mm -hmm. Missouri's always kind of been that weird, rebellious state sometimes. They're getting ready to pass the medical marijuana thing. I thought they already passed it. Mm, I think they vote on it in November. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Show me cannabis. Well, whatever. Show me <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> I, honestly. I thought they already passed it. My whole trunk is full of weed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I might need to check. <laughs> I was wondering what that smell was. Yeah, right. Um, so I think, what was I, where was I going with this? I, Missouri passed some medical law. I just, from a purely economic and business standpoint, mm -hmm. I, I don't know why it's not sold mm -hmm. and taxed and given to every state. Like, honestly. Well, I mean, look at Colorado. Just really, because, like, we're always talking about how our economy's hurting mm -hmm. and we could be... Uh, using more tax incentives for schools. Well, we got a way to bankroll it right here yeah. that we're not taking advantage of. Right. We're cutting programs in schools, you know, very important programs, mm -hmm. the ones that you're kind of talking about that encourage creativity, mm -hmm. uh, encourage, you know, spontaneous type thought. You know, we're keeping around mathematics and science, which is important, but you can't totally focus on that kind exactly, of stuff because yeah. not everyone is geared towards that. Mm -hmm. And yet we're cutting these programs because of our financial problem. Yeah. Yet, like you said, there is a th there is an alternative. Absolutely. I mean, Colorado is the example. Didn't Colorado's tax incentives go right back to, like, the schools? I don't know how Colorado. much millions they made, but yeah. that they gave to schools. So that was, like, tier one. Tier mm -hmm. two was... Okay, uh, double everyone's tax return. Like, give them more money back on their tax returns. Yeah, and they're like, then they, shit, we have more money. And uh, they poured that right back into the economy. Right back into the economy. Yeah. And then the third level, which they're doing now, they're just like, well, we have so much money, I guess we'll give everyone free health care. You yeah. know, like, I mean, if that's not an example for America to follow, I don't know what is. Uh, yeah, I mean, if we're really, if like, we're all about making weapons mm -hmm. and selling them off and yeah, not worrying cool about the cost. Yeah, like, we're all cool with drone strikes and everything. Yeah, we're fine with fighting our own weapons that we gave we yeah, gave yeah. to the forces we're fighting today right. 20 years ago. Let's keep this going. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's just, that's all war is, is just to open the coffers to <laughs> American business. There's a better way to do that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there, I think there are also better products to be made, but at the same time, we can't be ignorant. You know, there are evil forces in this world that need to be dealt with. You know, like yeah, you said, Osama, I said, we gotta, ha need, we need SEAL Team Six. Yeah, you know, there's, the world is not all sunshine and rainbows. So, <laughs> it's a dirty, rough place. <laughs> yes, it will beat you down. <laughs> you keep you there. <laughs> if you let it, you, me, nobody's gonna hit as hard <laughs> as life. <laughs> Movie quotes. I man. didn't know you were going to pick it up I'm that far. always hard. on top of that. <laughs> That's like the one, you know, if you type in a YouTube inspirational video. It's on every it's inspirational <laughs> video is that Rocky quote. I'm like, it's a good quote. It is very good. Um, but yeah, there's just really no... I, I just speak purely from a business and mm -hmm. economic standpoint. I, I'm constantly thinking as a fiscal conservative. Mm -hmm. Like, what is the best? What's the most common sense mm -hmm. scenario? And then... Uh, basically a strong defensive stance on the world mm -hmm. it's i mean just a, a, a military united for one common purpose that's to make the world better not to make money off of it with mm. private contractors right yeah, right not about that yeah it's a little sketchy when it comes to that kind of stuff that's what sucks about being a republic a, a rhino a rhino <laughs> i have to for me to be a republican today to be considered one i have mm -hmm. to i have to believe in crazy I have to believe uh, that people are disgusting mm. if they choose something I don't believe in. Mm -hmm. I have to uh, have a complete fear of scientific study mm -hmm. and understanding and a fear of change in the new and the innovative and keep things as they are and just buy into the crazy of, like, I have to hate Democrats mm. if I want to love America. Right. That's, that's what it means to be the, in the cons conservative party today. Right. I'm just not about that. Which, ironically, is exactly the mere image of the Democratic Party. You know, they have to hate the Republicans. Exactly, they have to yeah. hate every. They have to uh, totally embrace scientific and all this kind of crap and yeah. support women's rights and everything. Which I'm not saying not to. Yeah, it's fine. I'm saying, but these sort of ideologies are just spinning out of control on each end. Mm -hmm. Yet in the middle, you know what you what you call rhino or a libertarian, or, you know, these other sorts of forces are coming about, while the two ends are freaking out and rolling their exactly. wheels, and just, yeah. you know, they're, 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 they have their safety off, and they're pulling the trigger in every direction. Yeah, and I just, I don't understand how it changed so fast from when I was a kid, 
to where everything made sense. Mm-hmm. And now, I'm, <laughs> and now I'm just totally scorned by my own political party. Yeah. And now I guess I'm a libertarian right. if I believe in these things. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not willing to say that climate change isn't real. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Why would? I mean, it's clearly the studies there. Like, <laughs> yeah, these people are lying. Why do they cherry pick? They know they, what they're doing. They love cherry picking scientific articles. They're like, people want to choose the facts they want. What is that called? Uh, bias enforcement or something yes. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, everyone wants to. Everyone can pick the facts they want. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, there's studies. They did a whole thing on studies on HBO about how studies are so Vice? rigged. Vice did? No, this is oh, HBO's. Okay. Uh, Last week with uh, John Oliver. Oh, you yeah. have to watch this. Show. Is that a TV show? You can watch all of his long reports online. It's a TV show on HBO. Uh, I mean, is it like scripted or is it kind of like the old John Stewart? It's kind of like the old John Stewart, but it's John Oliver. Okay. And he just comes out and he just talks about what happened last week. Oh, okay. And then he does a long topic that uh, he thinks is messed up. He did one on charter schools. He did one mm. on healthcare. Mm. He did one on uh, clemency. It's he's very it's very smart and he has a great team of researchers and nice. he also he'll call out anybody. Nice. He'll call out. He has a entire panel of dogs that look like the Supreme Court. <laughs> Brings them out every time there's an election <laughs> and there's like all right we need to figure out does this dog look more like this guy or does this everyone vote on Twitter? Like, <laughs> That's awesome. So they have a panel of judges. I'm gonna tune in. <laughs> I'm going to tune. He's in hilarious. That. And, but he also brings up some real things uh, that we need to fix in this country. And uh, he's one of the people that made me realize that I just, I can't, I guess I, I have, I just can't call myself a Republican anymore. Yeah. Or, or peop- they don't want me to. Mm-hmm. They don't want me to be a Republican. No. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Like, I mean, and when you said I'm a Republican, I mean, to me, my, the dust in my ears kind of shook a little bit. Like, I don't hear people claiming that party anymore at all. You know, mm-hmm. the, the mainstream party is a Democrat, you know, I'm well, a Democrat, I'm a Democrat. I'm completely ashamed of what the Republican party is considered today. Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm just a fiscal conservative. Mm-hmm. I just remember it, like in 2011, I told you when I was in that lab for the fund that my school ran, $4, right. mil, $4 million fund that they've accrued over the last 10 years Jeez. and watching it spiral, all of their commodities and spiral as they, as the, responsible fiscal party mm-hmm. argued about paying back debt, which you're supposed to do in a business setting. Right. You have to do that. And threatening our AAA cre- credit rating. Mm-hmm. That was never heard of. Just like literally Wall Street guys. These aren't like conservatives. These are Wall Street guys. Right. Liberals. Being like, I hope that the house is cool with the absolute destruction of the credit rating that's <laughs> about to happen. Right. Like top banks were like, stop this. Yeah. You're out of your mind. Right. And but I'm also someone that believes when the GDP drops below, you just replace all of Congress, start over. Wipe, Seriously, wipe the slate clean. Why don't we do that kind of stuff? You know, that's what Warren Buffett's solution was. Seri- He's well, like, every time the GDP drops below to a negative in two years, you replace all of Congress. Yes. Try again. Yeah, we definitely and that's need brilliant. a brilliant. Re- we definitely need a, re- a remake of of Congress of <laughs> of, pol- of American politics completely. Wipe it clean. <laughs> Why the hell can I bank on my phone? I keep every sort of personal information mm-hmm. on my phone. Yeah, I can't vote on my phone. I can't have a like an internet. You, you can't get on the internet and vote for a particular p- uh, politician to represent you. Mm-hmm. Or why can't I just vote on the laws myself that affect me? I think one day we will get there. Encryption, I think so as well. Encryption needs to get a little bit more. Savvy. 256-bit encryption? I mean, that the, the Pentagon or NSA can't crack? Well, I would, I would say this. Uh, the government has definitely beefed up their cyber protection in the big last time. Uh, five years. Like, big time. Obviously, you know, the Snowden NSA scandal. Mm-hmm. But we also have a dedicated group of cyber crime in the Pentagon now. And they are constantly protecting from outside threats between right. China and Russia, which are North Korea, you know, yeah. all that kind of shit. The hacks are constantly going. You don't see them, but they are happening in yes. real time. Right. Um, and you, there's like a map you can log on to online hmm. and see all the current cyber attacks. What? It's really? called State of the Internet. Ooh, I'd like to see this map. Yeah, check it out. Um, but I think voting one day will get there to where we can vote online and be secure and Know what you're I mean, doing. it just seems like the next step. Do these look like right? Uh, I think it's the third one. State of the Internet report. It just seems like the next step as far as everything. You know, we 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 do so much social media solutions. Close. Aha. Uh-huh. Right wait, here. Right. 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 View now. Yeah. There you go. Booyah. Internet connection. That's speed. connection speed, and then you can see uh, different ones. 
Oh, these are just speeds. This might be the wrong index. Anyway. But, yeah, this you can cool see all like live it. stuff. And uh, I've recently Oof. tried to get into uh, mapping the darknet. Oh, wow. Which is a huge, That's huge. a big project. Well, I'm not trying to map it. I'm okay. just, I, I, I like Traverse studying it. the history of it. Like, yeah. th- this is a, a system that the U.S. Navy created mm-hmm. to communicate independently and in, uh, with various proxy servers to, ma- to mask their movements and communications. Wait, and then they adopted talk- it to the public. You're talking Tor. I'm talking Tor talking network, Tor. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. that's to get on the dark web, which is that's the Tor network mm-hmm. is the dark web, right? And well, uh, it's, it's the internet. It's a series of anonymous uh, IP addresses bouncing around to hide your real address so they mm-hmm. can't get back to you, right? I mean, some can, but I mean, not all. Like most most people just interchange. You know, no no one says I'm on, I'm on the World Wide Web. No one says that. But no. when you say that I got on the internet, that's what you're on. You're on the World Wide Web. Yeah, you're on the World Wide Web. This it's is like, the dark net. This is the stuff you it's don't the see. Internet. Yeah. Right. The whole thing is the internet. And totally, the World Wide yeah. Web is just a piece of totally this masked internet. Yeah. I was talking to a, co- a coworker about this the other day. The the, the deep web. Or the dark web is just like compiled of uh, medical records, uh, terrorist mm-hmm. networks, child pornography. I mean, anything you can possibly think of mm-hmm. is in the deep web. Yep. I mean, the deep web gets kind of like a bad name, like child pornography, and people are like, "Oh, well, deep dark web, evil." Yeah. It's just it's so big. It's That's what, just kind of anything's one... what you choose it to be. Yeah. Right. I use it to research things that like wouldn't be considered cool. Well, they're just <laughs> giant archi- they're just huge archives of information, mm-hmm. right? Medical records and army, uh, military type statistics, banking records, banking records, stuff like that. You can't Monotonous access them, but they're stuff. back there. Mm-hmm. They're like it, only what we surf probably accounts for like less than five percent of the entire yeah. internet. Yeah, all the very, data very that's locked percentage. out there. Your right. bank accounts, your DMV records, Facebook, like that. All that kind exactly. Of shit. Yeah. yeah, that's World Wide Web. WWE. All that's stored in the dark web, but. Uh, the Tor network is the ability to jump through the dark web mm-hmm. or to jump through the actual internet. Right. Without anonymously. Being anonymously. Mm-hmm. And that is probably not as true as it is anymore as the Utah facility gets built for the NSA. Mm, right. And but it seems like every chess move yeah. that one side does, mm-hmm. the other side has a move for it sooner or later, you know? So the NSA comes out say, So we, who's the side right now? Who's whose side? Do the NSA versus who? People, people, yeah, anonymous. That's you know, different what types scares of me. Yeah, that that is kind of a sad, scary thing to think about. I don't like that it's the people versus mm-hmm. the government now. Because if you if you're organizing a protest like mm-hmm. uh, Wall like Wall Street, the sit in on Wall Street, mm-hmm. Occupy, Occupy Wall Street, and the government can see you planning it, mm-hmm. they can stop you. They can and squash you. I mean, they can they can put together what you're d- trying to do and then try to thwart you. Well, a lot of that happened too, where so Occupy Wall Street happened mm-hmm. and you know freaked everyone out. The bankers got crazy, mm-hmm. and then six months down the road, they backtracked it all and they said, "Oh, look, Colin Cross. Oh, look how much he sent these emails. Yep. He got these people." Colin started it all the way back two years ago. Exactly. Nab, you're in jail. Yep. Because they know that you're a perpetrator, that you pushed this revolution through. Yep. And they will put together some kind of crime based on your history. Right. That you've done. Right. You... Not all of us can stay in the lines, especially me. <laughs> well, they'll <laughs> never claim to. They'll even twist something like he ordered drugs off the internet one time, you know, mm. and they just like something that. They'll use that. It, well, yeah, would, that would never hold up. They're just like, pop, there we go. And, and instead of saying, like, no, we want to take him out because he's a leader and he pushed this revolution through, he was a piece of this revolution mm. that almost overthrew part of our little status quo. Yeah. I loved it when uh, Snowden came out with like all the documents. And he's like, you basically have no privacy. And mm. the world was so shocked. I'm like, are you really that shocked? Mm-hmm. Are you really? Let's be serious. We signed off so many freedoms with the Patriot Act. <sighs> Dude, the, with, such a disgusting. And then it just got morphed into this monster. Mm-hmm. And Obama said he was going to fix it, and then he just increased it. Yeah, and right. It's just ridiculous to me. I hate I hate that that is what ha- has happened to America in that regard. Isn't it kind of natural, though? I mean, with this sort of like wizardry power that we have, you know, in your pocket, you have the most powerful computer mm-hmm. that's ever existed, Pretty and much. everyone has one. Yep. So how do you keep that sort of power in check? You build giant data centers and then monitor everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you do it without the entire world knowing. Exactly. Start and spying on other countries. I love that they had, the documents revealed all the economic trade deals that they used, <laughs> all of their... All the data they collected, they used against 
foreign trade deals to oh, of negotiate a better deal. I'm of like, course. well, that's messed up. I'm like, wow. everyone's got to be so mad at us for that. I think I good don't for know. them. It's kind of like a, <laughs> it's kind of a baller move, you know? Like, whew, that's, that's that's pretty ruthless. I, this all kind of goes back to black box trading, like mm-hmm. using everyone's data mm. in a way to like sift through it use a predictive algorithm Mm -hmm. you can kind of detect where the market's going to go based on everyone's metadata purchases Mm -hmm. online purchases credit cards Mm -hmm. banking history you can make a predictive algorithm granted it'd have to be super complex right and i tried to write one for my senior thesis once nice i came close not really (laughs) um (laughs) i wrote part of it and i think that with social media and us giving up so much info about willingly. what we're I'm buying the new iPhone today. Yep. Yeah. Willingly. Yeah, just throwing it away. Mm-hmm. It can checking into pizza. It completely hut. changes the dynamic of mm. the economy. Right. And not in our favor. Mm-hmm. For the government's favor. Right. Whoever can read it, but not for the consumer. Right. I was you know, I was gonna talk about Mr. Robot. He kinda touches on that. And one thing that I that I still I've, haven't seen it. I won't, I won't give anything <laughs> away, but I, I've written about this idea as far as these devices know you better than anyone in this whole world. This this little phone knows me better than my wife does. Yep. It knows it has all my notes, my most inner feelings. It has all my histories of what I googled, of what I looked at. Mm-hmm. It has my photos. It has everything. How, how 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 much it looks at me more than my wife does. No offense or anything, but <laughs> when it's when it has the camera on the front of it and I'm looking into it, reading Pinterest mm-hmm. or reading Wikipedia or whatever I'm doing. I spend a lot of time with that thing, and same with you, and same with everybody else. Yeah, I mean, we we've made this. I mean, yeah. your your phone is a product of you. Basic, it's yeah. your little private universe. I mean, just you using it, you're telling a story. That's why mine is programmed to wipe if I don't reset it in a day. Really? <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's, that's scary. If I don't lock it in a day, it erases itself. But you have it backed up or something somewhere. Yeah, not. I thought anywhere anyone that. could find it. <laughs> But, 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 but uh, as far as Mr. Robot, uh, one of the things that he does is he hacks people mm-hmm. that are in his life, and he gets the truth on them. Breaks them down. Breaks them down. But um, like for one, it's just like he hacks a psychiatrist, and she's like, Elliot, talk to me. And he looks at her, and he's like, <laughs> she <laughs> watches <laughs> porn, a lot of anal porn. She doesn't really like it, but she watches it. You know, yeah. just weird things like that that are hidden from the world, but mm-hmm. you know, the devices know. And if you can access that device or that information... The question is, what are you going to do with it? We used to teach that kind of tradecraft, how to read people. Now, you yeah. just have tech engineers going through your entire phone, metadata mm-hmm. history, right. phone calls, actual tapes, recorded conversations now, <laughs> which is just astonishing. How many exabytes of data do you need? <laughs> Seriously. And that's what we were talking about earlier, is the, the economy of data, mm-hmm. data consumption, Data crunching, data interpretation. That is the world that we live in today. The government, and these are little data collectors, you know? The government will pay you for that data. Yeah, they oh, paid absolutely. Google, they paid Microsoft. I mean, it's they, just, they want in. It's incredible to me how much that shows, how much um, it reveals. Yeah. Just data in general, how much it could reveal. How much, you know what? This is something I remember when I used to work at Walmart as a cashier. It was incredible how much you could figure out about a person just by checking them out. Yeah, what they were buying, just what they were buying, and the and the line that they came down of, and it was just one time. I see one person, I could tell you so much about this person. Mm-hmm. Oh, I couldn't even look if I didn't even look at them, <laughs> and I just saw what was coming down the conveyor belt. I probably could build the person. You know, sixty to eighty percent of the time, I could be like, "This is what you look like. This is who you are. Yep. You're a young." 17 year old white female because you have, you know, you have a, a Starbucks double shot and some uh, booty athletic shorts. Mm-hmm. You're going to the gym, you know, or whatever, or you're buying six, two liters of pop. Oh, you're overweight. Yep, you're overweight. Of course, yep. you know, it's incredible. <laughs> I, uh, I had a teacher in college. She worked in the clandestine service and she taught me tradecraft. Of, like, I was like her TA assistant. And she, she really invested in me in college. And, uh, she taught me all these things about how to read people, how to mm. get information from people without revealing facts about yourself. Social engineering, exactly. Right? Yeah, right. it was just a way to gather intel. And now it's just like we give all that intel freely. Isn't that if crazy? We get a hold of it, and that's why that's why people steal your phone like immediately, right. like yeah. whenever they want to learn about you. Right. Just, just think about phone. like 
if you're going to crack a password, how many, what, what, well, what's calling into? He's into CrossFit. Okay. Well, you know, that's <laughs> a possible password. Pa- I, I, <laughs> just, I didn't want to give anybody away. I didn't want to so, social engineer the podcast. I know my name is Crossland, but it's not, I'm not into CrossFit. You, you're, we didn't, we didn't your start family's it. behind we didn't start CrossFit. It. I get that a lot. I'm starting a YouTube conspiracy <laughs> video. Um, Did you know the Crossland Construction family actually founded CrossFit? <laughs> It's actually an interpretive demonic dance that you lift weights at. I hope that I really Sorry. do. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I hope that one day uh, we advance more as like a culture and social uh, species to like kind of evolve past our devices. Because mm-hmm. it kind of sucks when you walk down the street and everyone's just in their phone. Yeah. Especially in KC, where the Wi-Fi is free in almost the mm-hmm. entire city. Mm-hmm. So now people are just glued. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I hate that. <laughs> you think it's probably going to come from stuff on your face, you know, or embedded in your body, mm-hmm. you know, a little chip in your eye, and then, you know, I have your whole profile. Mark of the beast. Mark of the, do you think that's what it is? Well, my mom always is like, it's my mom like, too. that's going to be Mark of the Beast. I'm like, yes, mom, but it's so convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be so funny if they just called it Beast? Exactly. <laughs> be like, you assholes. And, uh. I think I just hope that society evolves past that one day. I mean, I'm and I'm sure that will not help the marketing world. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a more readable society would be easier. But mm-hmm. I rather see humans be humans again. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, picking <laughs> they're not gonna be bugs off each other's shoulders and yeah. throwing poop. One, one I'm day, just kidding. <laughs> Throw poop. Uh, I was taking the evolutionary route. I like it, <laughs> um, dude. This has been fun. My brain is spinning. <laughs> We've Good covered man. a lot of land. Yeah, dude, we did a lot. I've enjoyed it. Good, it was fun for sure. Thanks for having me, man. Really Absolutely. Um, you're going back to KC tonight? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I got to take my brother and his uh, wife out to dinner because they're having a baby boy. Nice, congratulations. Uh, now I'm going to be an uncle. I'm so excited. Nice. You have no idea. Nice. It's going to be awesome. So. so, and you were just down for a meeting, so you're going to be back in KC, back to work? I'm going to be back in the studio tomorrow night. So. There you go. Actually, no, I have a concert tomorrow night. Chance the Rapper. Come in the case. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know anything he sings. And we back. There you go. And we back, and we back, and we. <laughs> I just know Panda, 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 Panda. Oh, no, Badger, 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 Badger. Badger, Badger. badger. You remember that video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I love what you do here. And Thank it's, you. It's cool. Keep doing it. Please come back anytime, you know, podcast or, you know, collaborate with a video or we can just go out and shoot some guns or something, you know. Right, that's what we're going to do. It would be fun. Hang up the phone here. <laughs> <laughs> Hang up the phone. All righty, everybody. Thanks for spending in two, uh, two hours and 50 minutes today with us. That's always my mark, three hours. So <laughs> <laughs> it is. It just it just brings something That's out good. of the guest. Yeah, guest and me. Just things that we would never never would have talked about. Yeah. But we have to make it to that mark. You know? I know. I understand. You gotta traverse those waters. So exactly. Alrighty, we will see you people next week. Um, I think I think I have two planned podcasts for next week. I don't think they're gonna be on Monday or Tuesday, but I believe I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, but I'm going to. I think I have the band Tragic Prelude coming on. All three of their Whoa. Uh, yeah, they're all three of them are coming on, so that'd nice. be cool. And then in talks with Trey Lippy, Morrison, the boxer, uh, that's gonna be fighting at Buffalo Run Casino on the twenty third this Friday. So go see him if you don't have anything to do Friday night, Buffalo Run Casino. He's supposed to, he's been uh, talking to me about coming on, so that'd be really cool. Uh, if not, we have plenty more guests next week to come on and to fill the space, or you can just spend a nice hour with moi. So, hope you enjoyed the talk. Uh, check out Infinite Productions, ColdenCyber.com, and CariousFox.com, all that good stuff. Remember, the links are in the bio for all the discounts and URL codes and affiliate links and all that good stuff. So, <laughs> that's right. Everybody, have a great week. We shall see you next week. Peace. Sci-Fi Wins.